pudding day. Absolutely, Craig. There's a lot of excitement. And I'll bet you both teams had a lot of players that didn't get much sleep last night. They've got enthusiasm, they're excited, they're intense, but they're very nervous as well. I'm sure some butterflies for one certain freshman quarterback named John Navarre of Michigan, who's making his first start. That's because of the in injury to Drew Henson, who broke his foot. John Navarre is a classic drop back passer. His coaches call him a rifle arm. He has an outstanding ability to be able to stand in the pocket. He's strong and he's very mobile. Bowling Green State hopes to pick up where it left off a year ago when it finished the season with three straight victories. Much of the credit goes to sophomore Andy Sam, who has seven starts under his belt. That's right, Craig, and that first start that he had, he threw for over 300 yards, and he's been the team leader since that time. Well, when we come back, Michigan's running game looks to get back on track with the A train. A look at the ground attack coming up next as Michigan meets Bowling Green. On Navarre's day could be dictated by the running game. Justin Fargus returns after missing all of last season with an injury, but the conductor of the ground attack is senior Anthony Thomas. As the Michigan Wolverines enter the 2000 season, there are high expectations. But for the Wolverines to contend for the national title, they must run the ball better than they did a year ago when they managed just 121 yards per game, their lowest total in 37 seasons. For the Mason Blue to be considered among the nation's elite, the A train will have to rediscover that Michigan tradition. This year, uh, we're going to put emphasis on running. We did this spring. We want to run the ball. We want to get Anthony, you know. Moving up the field with, with the ball, gaining yards, that'll open up our passing game, and uh, you know we want to be able to control the clock on the ball. Anthony Thomas, now a senior, knows the importance of the ground attack. He's excited about how that big offensive line can open things up for the offense. We got um, healthy guys on the offensive line that's doing a great job, and coming back with Jarrell, we got the guys that can um, pass the ball. So somebody they can't have eight, nine guys up in the box anymore. Lloyd Carr knows that it isn't just his running game that'll place Michigan at the top. I think you have to have balance, and if we can stay healthy, which is something that we certainly had a problem with a year ago, we should be able to be more effective running the ball. Certainly we hope so, but um, I think college football, from the standpoint of the way people are playing defense now, they make it harder for you to run the football, so I think balance is still the key. If the defense matures quickly, and Drew Hansen returns as soon as he's expected to. Michigan's balanced offensive attack could give fans in Ann Arbor a chance to cheer for something they haven't had since 1997, a Big Ten championship. Thomas had a career year in 99, rushing for nearly 1,300 yards and 17 touchdowns. Well, Bowling Green isn't rolling over. They've got the dynamic duel, the one-two punch at tailback and Joe Alls and Godfrey Lewis, who combined for more than 1,000 yards last season, Bob. That's right, Craig. And as you look at Joe Alls, he gained an amazing 5.1 yards per carry last year. And Godfrey Lewis is a very tough physical runner. It should be fun watching him run today. We should have a good one here in Michigan. Couldn't be a better place to start the college football season. It's Bowling Green and number four Michigan coming up next from Ann Arbor. Welcome back to Ann Arbor. It's Bowling Green and number four Michigan in the season opener. And as you can see, it is a warm summer-like day here as we start the Labor Day weekend. The humidity high, temperature at 82 degrees. Forecast is for hazy skies, which may keep that sun away and uh, keep that heat off some of those players. Let's take a look at the coaches. Lloyd Carr entering his sixth season here at Michigan. One win shy of number 50 already as a head coach. Over on the other side of the football, it's Gary Blackney entering his 10th season at Bowling Green. 58 wins, 41 losses. He had success very early on in his coaching career with the Falcons, but he's looking to bring Bowling Green back. Here's a look at the series history. Bowling Green against the Big Ten. Only one win that coming way back in 1972 against Purdue. Michigan unbeaten against the MAC. This is the first meeting, as we mentioned off the top, between Bowling Green and Michigan. And we've got a couple of young quarterbacks going at it. As uh, we mentioned, Andy Sam of Bowling Green and John Navarre, who you know has some nerves for Michigan. He probably expected to take over in a couple of years after Drew Henson left. And 
for the last couple of years, Bob, of course, you, you mentioned Drew Henson. A lot of these fans have been waiting for a couple of years to see him as well. Exactly, and uh, he certainly will get a shot when his time comes. But right now, the game belongs to John Navarre at the quarterback spot. Bowling Green won the toss and deferred to kick off. They're going to put their defense on the field first. Gary Blackney certainly likes what he's got coming back on defense. One of the strengths of the team, nine starters return. And we are set to get the 2000 season underway. Vargas the return, I should say Thomas over the 20 yard line and Bowling Green all fired up as they'll take over Michigan well about the 21 yard line. John Navarre coming back, Justin Fargus was the return man. John Navarre, the freshman from Cudahy, Wisconsin, thought about going to Northwestern, had an offer from Wisconsin and ends up at Michigan. Well, the coaches have gotten him ready by putting him into a lot of situational type of uh, practice plans, and we'll see how it's going to pay off starting right now. And he is surrounded by a great offense, at least on paper. People like it first and 10 at the 22. And a bar handoff to Thomas, and he's met right up near the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. Let's take a look at the starting lineups tonight, or I should say this afternoon, from first the Michigan Wolverines. And there's the backfield. We talked about Anthony Thomas, his fullback, B.J. Askew, right up front, and John Navarre. David Terrell, the All-American and Fred Bolitnikoff candidate. He's joined by Walker and Thompson and the line up front, Steve Hutchinson. All Big Ten, all first three years of his career here at Michigan. Looking to make history if he repeats again, going out as a senior. Thomas carries up to the 25. So that'll set up now third down at about seven as we take a look at Bowling Green starting line of DJ Durkin, the heart and soul, of that front line for the Falcons. Chris Delavella. Anchors the linebacking core with Hewitt and Fisher. And Chad Long, who's coming along, pretty veteran group in that defensive backfield for Bowling Green. Third and seven now, first big test for the freshman quarterback, John Navarre. Back to pass, loops it over to Thomas. Easy first down, plenty of running room as he heads up near midfield, knocked out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Sergio Lund there. On uh, defense, a 21-yard gain for Thomas. That was a good call by the offensive coordinator, Stan Parrish. And when I spoke to him yesterday, he wanted to give John Navarre some throws that he could be successful at. And that was the first one. Good play. They go the safe route to start things out. Opening moments of the first quarter, Michigan on the move. Good confidence boost for the freshman. Thomas again, and he has met up front that Bowling Green defense. Gary Fisher meets him up front first, and DJ Ochur there as well. This is very interesting, Craig. Uh, Bowling Green on the last play, have play has played on Michigan's side of the line of scrimmage. That's what they need to do. They must be slanting, getting up the field with their defensive line. That's going to hurt Michigan's running game. Well, you could tell coming out on the field, Bob, Bowling Green's defense, they said, put us out there right away. We're ready to defend these guys. They're anxious to play and to prove that they can play the, against a team like Michigan and be successful. Vargas gets his first carry of the 2000 season and loses the football. And it looks like Michigan may have pounced back on the football. And no, Bowling Green comes out of there with it, waiting for an official word. It is Bowling Green football for the so the first turnover of the game, the first big break recovered by Carl Rose. That's exactly as a coach that you don't want to have happen in the opening game. Fumbles, turnovers, penalties, things of that nature can throw your rhythm off and your timing. And I'm sure the coaches are going to try to correct that immediately. Gary Fisher makes the initial hit, and here comes Andy Sum, the sophomore out of Indianapolis. Again, getting the start in the last seven games of the 99 season. Bowling Green on a three-game winning streak with the sophomore at the helm. And he'll start out passing right away. It loops it down to Kurt Gerling. Gerling still on his feet, trying to pick up another extra yard and picks up about five yards. 
And here's a look at the starting lineups out offense for Bowling Green. Joe Alves and Eric Clark at the backfield with some. The receiving core, Gerling a good one. Alexander and Durham the tight end. And up front, Curl is out, so Mazur is in. At center. Second down and five. And going nowhere. Michigan's defense up front. Very interesting. Balls is stopped. Very interesting game plan here by the coaching staff. Let's take a look at the starting defense up front for Michigan. You saw the lineman up front, the linebacking core anchored by Larry Foote. And the backfield, pretty good one. James Whitley leading the crew. One of four captains on Michigan this year. The Wolverines have never had four captains before in that long history of the program. Third down now at about five. Alls gets the call on the quick draw. Michigan defense says, no way. Michigan put their nickel defense on the field and blitzed the two inside linebackers there, Craig, and stopped the run. That was a big play for Michigan. Larry Foote and Julius Curry there to make the initial contact, so it's fourth down. Bowling Green can't do anything with the game's first turnover. Ricky Schneider, the backup quarterback, is out to punt. He actually started at quarterback at the beginning of last season. And the return goes up front to Bellamy. And he takes it up to about the 20 yard line. So that's where Michigan will get their second start on offense when we come back to Ann Arbor. We're early in the first quarter between Bowling Green and Michigan. Back to the big house in Ann Arbor. Bowling Green and Michigan opening moments of the 2000 season. The Wolverines get their second try on offense. Vargas fumbled away on his first carry in about two years. But Bowling Green cannot take advantage of the turnover. So the Wolverines start out on offense again. Navarre back to pass. Finds Terrell wide open. Stays on his feet. Pretty good gain of about seven yards. What an exciting receiver Terrell is. They're going to get the ball to him as much as they possibly can. That was what you call a smash route with the inside receiver running a corner. And he looks like he can break it at any time. Ken Dobbs there to make the tackle. Wraps up Terrell. 85 career reception, 71 coming last season. Second and short, Thomas gets the call. Plows up ahead near first down territory. Chad Long there to make the tackle for the Falcons, along with Mitch Hewitt. Craig, interesting game plan by both coaching staffs. Uh, an awful lot of multiple wide receiver, multiple tight end, one back type of sets, shotgun on early downs. This is going to be an interesting game. Both teams are are prepped for that type of system, and it looks like the, uh, Michigan is executing extremely well right now in this series. Well, Bob, you talked to Lloyd Carr yesterday morning, and I know one of the things he alluded to in all the questions about John Navarre is you see Michigan does pick up the first down. Is he's not afraid to throw anything at him. He's been in the program for a full year. It just happens to be that he's been uh, thrust into the starting lineup due to an injury. Well, that's correct, and they were not going to change their offense. He had to get himself prepared, and he looks like he's done that pretty well. So first to 10, make it the 31-yard line. John Navarre, the freshman who was 34 and 4 during his high school career in Cudahy, Wisconsin. Back to pass again. Finds Terrell. Makes a spin move and plunges ahead for about a five-yard game. That's what makes Terrell exciting. He's got a little spin move there, and if he gets away in one-on-one -on -one coverage, Bob. Same type of pass that they had on this side of the field, Craig, and it looked like he was ready to break that right away. That was a good play by the left corner uh, from Bowling Green. So far, Navarre, three of three for 32 yards. Each pass completion means a little bit more confidence. He hasn't thrown the ball much more than five yards down the field, but they've been successful on each throw, and he looks like he's very accurate. Second down at about five. Navarre delayed handoff. Thomas takes it, tries to bounce off one of the tacklers and can't do it. Stacked up there by Chris Hainline. 
and Hewitt. This is where Michigan has to do a great job is on third down because they are running the ball so much they may be creating these third and three and four and five yard situations for them. And let's see what they go to right now. But I would assume the ball is going to be into one of the wide receivers hands or the running back. Third down and short. Terrell lines up on the near side. Thomas goes in motion, the bar back to pass. Looking towards the senior, and he just dropped the ball. Maybe looking ahead before he had it in his hands, Bob. Right on the money, it was a good throw. The timing was good. They're giving John Navarre those three and five step type of timing drops. And he getting the ball, he's getting the ball away very quickly. They're anticipating the pressure. Watch this throw, this ball was right there. Looked like the receiver took his eyes off it uh, just for a moment and lost it. Aiden Epstein back to punt. Snap a little bit high, recovers just in time and gets a pretty good boot off. Bearcats called inside the 20 and Bowling Green will take over at their own 17 yard line as Alls takes that punt from Epstein. That was a great play by Epstein. He had to really sky for that ball, Craig. If he didn't do that, that ball is back there on about the five yard line with Bowling Green in hot pursuit. It could have been a big turnover. Big play for the Michigan uh, kicking game right there. A 45 yard punt. And punters like to keep track of those stats inside the 20 yard line. Shotgun formation for some. And flag stop action at the line of scrimmage before the snap. You saw that play develop, Craig. They worked on that on Thursday when I was at the, their practice. Sam is on the rollout coming out and really stretching the perimeter and it looked like he was going to have a successful play if he was able to throw it. So a false start on the offense and Harry Blackney does not like to see that especially when you're inside the 20 already that'll back him up now to the 12 yard line. It's those little mistakes here on opening day that can become frustrating. That's what he exactly said that uh, he can't allow to have happen with his team. Penalties and turnovers, especially when you're playing on the road. First and 15 now for Sam's crew. And off and tackle behind a line of scrimmage. Michigan's defense right in on it. Jake Freisinger there to make the initial contact. Watch this penetration right here by Freisinger. They got a stunt going with a safety coming from the outside edge and Freisinger does an outstanding job of penetrating the line of scrimmage and playing on the other side and making a big play for Michigan. A loss of about two yards. So Bowling Green really playing from behind here. Only four yards rushing so far in three tries. And didn't get anything more there. Again, that Michigan defense stacking up that front line. Well, at this point in time, you know, Bowling Green is attempting to do the same thing that Michigan has done on offense. Change personnel on about every snap. Try to confuse the defense and keep them off balance. Run the ball, throw it, try to get the first down. Here's a look at the offense so far. Bowling Green, five plays and only two yards against that Michigan defense, who starting out the year had a lot of question marks, Bob. That's right. Uh, they're young and inexperienced, but according to their coaches, they're fast. They like their speed. Third down and long. Sound back to pass. Heavy rush coming, has to loop it down. And big time hit again. Loss of yards by Larry Foote. He came in strong for Michigan's defense, and they are fired up on the field. Well, Bowling Green put four wide receivers on the field, sent them all up the field real hard, trying to clear a path for the screen to the fullback. Uh, the linemen missed their block because if they had made that one block, they were in man-to-man -man coverage, and uh, the linebacker that made the play made an outstanding tackle, beating the uh, protection to the ball carrier. Bellamy standing at the 45-yard line. Pretty good punt by Snyder back to midfield. Bellamy drops it, picks it up inside the 40. Gets down to about the 37-yard line. Excellent field possession for Michigan when we come back to Ann Arbor. 
Michigan and Bowling Green, the Wolverines in great field position. It's the 2000 season opener. Leading the way against Bowling Green so far in the season opener. No score early on, but Michigan in great position. First and 10 at the 37 of the Falcons. Thomas, flag on the field. Thomas got about two yards. Another one back set type of play where they're trying to get to the perimeter real fast. And I'm sure that looks like to me like it may be a holding call on Michigan. Now that will be the call. And it happened up near the line of scrimmage. So that'll pin the Wolverines back towards midfield a little bit more. Craig, both coaches will not like this. They will not like the penalties. Holding. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. Stephen Pomone, our referee for the opener here. As you mentioned, the, uh, the penalties can get a little bit frustrating for the coaches. That's right. They're drive stoppers, Craig. They have to be eliminated. and 18 and Navarre goes down loses the football still loose and a flag comes flying out well that was a play action pass where he really was in a seven step drop type of timing and Bowling Green was blitzing from the backside and Navarre took a good hit on the back and the ball came flying out now it looks to me like it's going to be a penalty for a late hit personal foul against Bowling Green And it is going to be a personal foul against the Falcons. DJ Durkin there to make the initial contact, knocking that ball loose. Another penalty, Craig. And uh, again, these are real problems in opening games and need to be solved early. And I'm sure the coaches will address that. Anthony Thomas came up with the fumble recovery. And you saw Gary Blackney kind of frustrating from the standpoint of that's not your your typical foul either, is it? That ball is loose and you want to go get it. That's right. An absolutely aggressive play there. However, it was a little late, and uh, I'm sure the, rough, the official saw it that way. Well, instead of second and about 40, it turns out to be a first and 10, so a little blessing for the Wolverines as they take over at the 47. Thomas straight ahead down to the 40. Well, Michigan escaped a bullet on that one uh, because uh, with that play selection and the blitz coming on the backside, it could have been a very big play for the Bowling Green defense. Pretty good gain, about seven yards, sets up second and three. These are tough calls on defense, second and three, to know exactly how to play it. Let's see what Bowling Green does. Thomas, six rushes, 14 yards, gets the call again. Maybe one more. Well, no score here in the opening quarter at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor between Michigan and Bowling Green. Along with Bob Elisenti, I'm Craig Kishan welcoming, welcoming you to the 2000 season opener. And we've got a nice crowd on hand. Once again, the streak of 100,000 100, plus continues. What a great venue for college football. Bowling Green has been going to a lot of eight-man front, and they're doing it again right here, right now. Let's see what Michigan does. On the third and two, Thomas in heavy pursuit is not going to pick it up. Trying to go to the outside. Chad Long there to wrap him up and lose a couple of yards back to the 41. Craig, that was excellent run support by the safety Chad Long. If you watch his angle coming up, taking the... Uh, uh, running lane away from the uh, tailback and I, I think this guy is a guy that they're going to really lean on heavily throughout the year to be their playmaker in the secondary. Epstein back to punt. And this one goes into the end zone for the touchback. Little too much. Bowling Green has to feel pretty good. A scoreless game here in Michigan. You're watching Big Ten football from ESPN+. Plus. For Bowling Green at the 20-yard line, Andy Soms' crew 
minus three yards rushing, zero total yards so far in their first two drives, which has been three and out. Michigan's defense has been aggressive. Actually, both defenses have been very aggressive. This time, that one just missed going out of bounds. That was a great throw by the quarterback. And as you look at some, he releases that with excellent timing. Exactly what you want. Nice loft to it. Leads the receiver down the field and unfortunately he takes his eye off and drops it. But that could have been a big play for Bowling Green. Aaron Alexander had it for a moment. Second and ten now. Down with four receivers this time, gives it off to the running back. And he has met up near the line of scrimmage, maybe a loss of one, hit by John Spytek. That was a nice play by the inside linebackers from Michigan. They fill the holes really quickly, and I'm sure that Bowling Green coaches Tom Lichtenberg will see that, and they'll go to a little bit more play action on those down and distances to try to bring those linebackers up and create the creases underneath to get the uh, down and distance they're looking for. We saw a moment ago the rushing yards by both clubs. Nothing to brag about early unless you're on the defensive side of the football. Third and ten. Sam the handoff again and going nowhere. That Michigan defense once again pushing them back a yard and two at a time. Bowman is there and Petrozilli as well. That's really an interesting call there on third and ten to run the fullback up inside against a fast, stunning type of defense. Uh, no gain, obviously, was the result, and they're forced to punt. Bellamy the return. Picking up some speed and another great open field tackle by the Falcons, stopping them at the 50-yard line. Fisher is there again. Just think of that first play, Craig. How much of the field position has turned over? That ball was dropped around the 50-yard line. If he had caught it, he may have continued for a touchdown or for a big gain. And now here we are with Michigan having the ball on the 49-yard line of Bowling Green field position again for their offense. Special teams in defense. Bowling Green's got that closing speed you look for. That's correct. And, and obviously, that's a big part of the game is speed. And uh, both teams are playing extremely close to the vest right now. Walker and Terrell in at receiver for Navarre. This time he hands off to Thomas. Makes a nice cut. Crosses the 40, first down. For Anthony Thomas, a 12-yard gain down to the 37-yard line. It, you know what made that play go, Craig? Take a look at the offensive line. They overloaded the tackle to the right side, kept the tight end on the short side, and created a mismatch to the wide side of the field and given the running back room to make his cuts. Carl Rose in on the tackle for the Falcons. Thomas, nine carries already here in the first quarter. Still two minutes to go. Here's his tenth. Eludes one tackler. Picks up some good yards down near the 30-yard line. Looks to me like Thomas is getting his timing back, similar to what he had last year. He made a nice move on the corner, be able to get the edge and get up the field. I like the way he's running the football. Carl Rose again there on the tackle. 33 yards to the opening quarter for Thomas. Sets up second and short, and if you're, you're an offense, of course, Bob, you love second and short. Absolutely. That's a, that's a down that you're looking for all the time, to stay on schedule or ahead of schedule. You don't like what just flew into your screen there, that yellow flag. And it's going to be holding against Michigan. So, so much for second and short. Well, I'm sure the coaching staff at halftime are going to address that on both sides of the ball. But more importantly, uh, these types of penalties sometimes you anticipate are going to happen, but uh, there's way too many here in the first quarter uh, for both teams to keep drives alive. Holding. Offense with a takedown. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. You mentioned the frustrations and getting things corrected. Two holding penalties already on Michigan's offense. Right. And you want your teams to play smart and you want them to play efficiently. And the efficiency it has to do with penalties and so on. 
Second down and 14 of our back to pass. Looking for Terrell. He's open. Touchdown, Michigan. 41 yards, the freshman. His first collegiate touchdown pass. That was interesting about that throw. It was a play action to the weak side. And as he threw it, our receiver split the double coverage. And as he split the double coverage, the ball was right there on the money. Terrell gets a big play. Sergio London, Kyle Rose get the worst of that against Terrell on defense. Epstein in to try the extra point. And it is there in the Wolverines with a minute to go here in the first quarter. Have scored their first points the 2000 season. They lead Bowling Green seven to nothing. As we watch this, Craig, you know, this was well executed. Good play action, good setup. Excellent throw. Let him into the end zone. Terrell has beaten those defensive backs by about five yards. That was a big time play. He had the giddy up going from the start off the line of scrimmage, didn't he? He sure did. They're not pressing him or bumping him, and I'm sure maybe they'll change up and roll up on him and not, not try to give him free access like that because that was too easy for him to split those defenders. Well, pretty impressive start for John Navarre. Four out of five, 73 yards and a touchdown. And he likes Terrell already catching three of those passes. Well, as you know, and as you've noticed, now they're going to some play action with them, a little deeper drop, getting rid of the ball. They've set up the run. They've run a three and five step drop passing. Now it's time to play action and get the ball deep. And uh, that was an excellent call by Stan Parrish. Here's a look at the scoring drive. Three plays, 49 yards, only takes a minute 24. Good field position uh, resulted in that, and obviously uh, their execution was excellent throughout that entire drive, except for the holding penalty. Epstein's kick goes about five yards deep, and it's going to be a touchback. David Batista back there, and don't want to bring it out that far back, that's for sure. Just under a minute to go here in the first quarter, 55 seconds. And Michigan's defense has risen to the occasion so far against Bowling Green. It's been 3-3 three, three and out so far for the Falcons. You know, it's been very interesting, too, as you watch the special teams execute both sides, Bowling Green and Michigan, have had good special teams play. And uh, that's a critical factor that, as a coach, you worry about going into the opening part of the season, especially the first game. So the Falcons at their own 20. Curling in motion. Saab back to pass, rolls to his left. A lot of room to run if he wants to. This time he dumps it off to his big tight end and picks up a first down, Ross Durham. Other scores from around college football, number 16, Ohio State and Fresno State scoreless in the first quarter. Toledo leads Penn State in the first quarter, 10 to nothing. Nittany Lions already with one loss on the season. Minnesota trailing Louisiana Monroe and Purdue in Central Michigan. Get going in just a little while. Number 10, Virginia Tech, the early lead over Akron and Nebraska. San Jose State just underway as well. Top ranked Cornhuskers. First down at 10 to 33. Stop trying to get a little rhythm in his offense with another pass play, but again across that front line. The big paw up in the air by Jake Freisinger. Knocks that one down. Freisinger gets his hands up. They try to cut him at the line of scrimmage. There's a great job playing off the block. But going back to that first play on first and 10, and what I said earlier about play action, I think Sam got out on the edge there on that bootleg and really made a nice play on that uh, throw to the tight end. Good call by Tom Lichtenberg. Second and 10, Sam back to pass over the middle, finds Gerling. Right up near the first down marker, maybe a tad short. Julius Curry there to make the tackle on the coverage. Bowling Green caught uh, Michigan in on a blitz. They're on one on one coverage. Gerling made a nice move to the inside, and uh, the protection was very good for Sam, and of course, his timing was good on the throw. 
Nice accurate throw and another good call by the Bowling Green coaching staff. So after three three and outs Bowling Green starting to get that rhythm that they need and are used to on offense. That's true and uh, Craig you know anytime you can keep a defense off balance uh, with a good play action game and a good running game it's obviously uh, going to prove for some good results for you. And another thing that it does that it keeps the uh, Michigan offense off the field and and that's the key element time of possession. John Navarre's debut so far so good here in the first quarter hooking up to David Terrell for the touchdown as Michigan leads after the first quarter. Arbor Michigan leading Bowling Green seven to nothing here as we get set to start the second quarter from the big house. Here's a look at what happened in the first quarter as far as stats go rushing yards not quite there of course for Bowling Green but their passing game started to get into gear at the end of the first quarter. And Michigan with the early turnover. Sound back to pass first and 10 feeling the heat. Still on his feet. And gets past midfield and a pretty good scramble a pretty good gain of about seven yards. Well that shows you his ability right there. He shook off a tackler cut back to the middle of the field stumbled a little bit got his balance. He's got some good ability right here good mobility for a guy six foot six. Mobility is right to say he's fast probably not but having the mobi mobility and that sense to stay on your feet know where you are. You're absolutely right Craig. Second down call it three. Bowling Green just inside Michigan territory. And once again that Michigan defense not allowing any running room. Well they loaded up that time Craig they brought the safety up on the weak side and had an eight man front and very difficult when you got all those gaps filled to be able to get any yardage without a lead back in front of you. And Godfrey Lewis got his first carry of the game. Stays at uh, about three more yards they need to pick up for that first down. Dom in that shotgun. Back to pass, rolls to his left. Looking for Gerling. And it looked like Gerling should have caught that ball, but the defense, Curry, may have got a hand in on there. He distracted the throw. He made a nice play. And if the ball was not thrown outside and wide, he might have picked that and gone for a touchdown. You can see on the replay, he has his sights on it. And Gerling should have probably caught it. If he had caught it in his hands, he made a big play out of it. Ronald Bellamy standing at his 10 yard line set to take the punt from Ricky Snyder. Bellamy's got it at the 10 and he's brought down right away. Good special teams tackle by Morton. We're early in the second quarter Michigan leading Bowling Green. You are watching Big Ten football from ESPN plus. Falcons seven to nothing. We are early in the second quarter and Michigan of course a huge huge line of history starting season number 121 here and another possible false starter offsides. It looks like it's going to go against the Wolverines. It's a false start on the right hand side of the offensive line it looks like to me Craig. Offense. Third penalty on the Wolverines the distance, and we're still early here in the first half. Well, that's something obviously they're going to address at halftime or maybe they've already done it on the sideline I'm sure but that's got to be corrected. That pins Navarre back to his five. Rolls out of there. Dumps the pass up. Plenty of running room ahead. Nice cut up field still on his feet and finally brought down inside the 40 yard line. That's a great call by Stan Parrish. A little play action down there and getting the ball out very quickly. Everybody's anticipating the run when you're backed up. I thought Navarre did a great job of ball handling there. Faking that run and getting everybody uh, brought up into the line of scrimmage and then bringing it out on the edge as you see on this replay. 
giving him a chance to make a uh, an outstanding play to his running back. Again, that ball was only thrown about two or three yards, but uh, Askew did the rest. And he rumbles 58 yards, and again, the key staying on his feet, and he had a lot of room to get a rumbling going. Thomas, about three more down to the 34. You know, Craig, uh, John Navarre had to have success early for him to gain confidence, and you know, as I'm watching him perform, I see a more and more type of confident type of quarterback out there. His numbers are fantastic. Five for six for 131 yards. That's a great start for that young man. Is he a freshman or a senior, Bob? <laughs> Playing <laughs> with extremely good technique. Well coached. Second down at seven. The bar rolls out again. Feels the heat. Looking for Terrell and draws the flag. It's going to be pass interference inside the five yard line. Well, that was a throwback off a play pass, and David Terrell had tremendous momentum going towards the end zone, and that ball was thrown exactly where he was going to be. The defender grabbed him by the shirt and the neck, saved a touchdown, but obviously the flags come out. Ken Dobbs should be guilty of the infraction. Here's another look. Holds up Terrell and denying him the ability to catch the ball, so... On the pass interference, Michigan gets the yards back. Could have had six, but they'll settle for first and 10 at the 19-yard line. There's a look at the penalty situation. Bob, you brought up a good point, though. Take the penalty now, because otherwise he's going in the end zone. He had a touch, and it was a greatly executed play by both the receiver and the quarterback. Another handoff, running play. Chris Perry, the true freshman, in for Michigan, getting his first college carry. This is a player that they really like, and uh, Chris Perry's got speed, he's got size, and uh, I, I think he's the type of player that Michigan is gonna really enjoy having around. He's a very aggressive running back, and uh, I know they have a great deal of respect for him. They wanted to sprinkle him into the lineup a little bit, and you don't want to do that when you're behind. You don't want to do that and wait either for a big lead. He needs to gain a lot of experience, and they like what they see. That's correct, Greg. Bar back to pass. Over the middle, touchdown, Michigan. Ronald Bellamy on the reception of 19 yards, and John Navar making it look pretty easy right now. Like I said earlier, you know, they wanted to give him some throws to gain confidence and feel good about himself. They came right back with the throw that they normally used to get the ball to David Terrell on, the, Terrell on the outside, but instead he went to the inside receiver for the corner route, and Bellamy made a very, very nice catch of that play. His first career touchdown catch. Epstein adds the extra point, and the Wolverines now starting to build their lead. 11-23 to go here in the second quarter, and the Wolverines lead the Falcons thanks to John Navarre's second touchdown pass, 14 to nothing. You're watching Big Ten football from ESPN+. Plus. The big house in Ann Arbor, Michigan, building its lead over Bowling Green now here in the second quarter. It's 14 to nothing. John Navarre with a couple of touchdown passes, the latest to Bellamy. Well, he's looking very comfortable in the pocket back there. I would assume the coaches from Bowling Green will start to put more pressure on him and try to throw his rhythm off here as the game goes along. Batista and all set back to return this kick by Epstein. About a yard deep in the end zone. Batista had his foot out, has to bring it out. And recovers pretty nicely up to about the 18-yard line. That's the first special teams error that I've seen so far, and that's something that you really want to correct. Bringing the ball out, you got to bring it out with intensity. You got to be quick in your decision making, and that's something that can cause you to have a lot of yardage problems uh, with your offense. Spy tech there to bring him down. There's the scoring drive. Five plays, 90 yards in just two minutes. And again, the arm of John Navarre and some pretty confident play leading Michigan right now. No question about that, Craig. He's uh, done an excellent job in both the run and the pass, but particularly the play passes and the deep ball. 
Ball's actually at the 14-yard line. First and 10 for some. Back the pass, finds his receiver. Trying to get up near first down territory. Shante Orr with the tackle. Psalm's timing was excellent on that play. He got back set up, got the ball released, and uh, it turned out to be a nice gain. First down. Aaron Alexander with the run, uh, catch and run. 150 yards passing already for Navarre. Well, Bowling Green has taken the uh, running game away. They've got 15 carries for 24 yards, so Navarre has stepped up and done a great job for that young man. Sam feeling the heat. Gurling on a great pass play. Picks up the first down up to the 38-yard line. We do have a flag down on the play, however, up near the line of scrimmage. That's an area where holding is generally called, and uh, that's unfortunate for Bowling Green because they got a nice little drive started here. And that is going to be the call. Unfortunate, and, and Bob, at this point, you're down by two touchdowns. Still plenty of time left in the second quarter, but Gary Blackney's club needs to get on the board, don't you think, right Absolutely. now? Absolutely, and uh, how do they win the game? They go back to basics, try to get their passing game going, use the clock. Obviously, this type of throw is what you want. He's got a lot of pressure on him. He stood in the pocket, got rid of it. It's unfortunate they got a holding call. Michigan's D was coming, though. Well, it's an up-the-field defense. It's a pressure defense. They like the speed. They're inexperienced, but they're they're youthful enough and they're aggressive enough that they can make things happen. It should be an exciting defense to watch grow. I bet by the middle of the season, uh, they'll be very efficient and very cohesive as a group. First down at 20 now at the 15-yard line. Tom playing from behind on the scoreboard and after the penalty as well. Picks up the loose ball. Fires looking for his receiver, and that one just out of bounds, intended for David Batista. Brandon Williams there on the coverage. Michigan leading Bowling Green in the opener here at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. 14 to nothing is our score, along with Bob Balicenti. I'm Craig Kishan. The Fourth-ranked team in the country has a pretty good backup quarterback making his starting debut in John Navarre. It's been all John Navarre in the passing game for Michigan so far. Bowling Green playing catch-up right now. He's off to a great start, and I like what Bowling Green is doing right now with their passing game. They're going to multiple wide receivers and trying to get the ball up the field in the vertical way. They've got to come up with a big play to get them started, get them jump-started, and get the enthusiasm going for their offense. Larry Foote and Jeremy Lesseur there on the tackle, knocking alls down. Larry Foote is a guy that they think is going to take the place of Ian Gold, and we had Ian Gold in the Senior Bowl, and he was a rolling ball of butcher knives as a linebacker, and uh, they feel that Foote is a, a type of guy, the intense type of player, a middle linebacker that they need to make this defense go. Actually, that last carry by John Gibson. Third down and 22. Four wideouts for Sam. Back in his own end zone and just dumps this one off. That was going to be a screen, Craig, and it just it was covered so well by the Michigan defense. Michigan has gone to their dime defense and have put extra defensive backs on the field to combat the uh, multiple wide receivers that Bowling Green is using. They did an excellent job of covering that play. Elaine Kashima there on the initial pressure. Terrell now back to receive this punt. Michigan's going to get great field position. Terrell on the run, drops the ball. It's loose. And the initial indication says Michigan gets it back. A fortunate break for the Wolverines. That was really a, a questionable decision on uh, his part. He should have let that drop, and uh, that was a danger of catch. Well, the Wolverines have a two-touchdown lead over Bowling Green. When we come back, 9.26 to go. You're watching Big Ten football from ESPN+. Plus. Introducing here at Michigan Stadium, first game ever played between these two schools. Trailing the Wolverines, though, by two touchdowns on the scoreboard. And again, that play blown dead before the handoff. And 
false start. Another false offense. start. Back this time the on field. the Wolverines. First down. Obviously, we've talked about penalties, uh, and as a coach, you don't want to see them happen. This is something that I think the Michigan coaches and the Bowling Green coaches can build on, something they can work their team with, and as far as their timing and as far as their communication skills for their front and their quarterback. And the, the things that you worry about is in opening games, when you do this, your continuity gets thrown way off and you lose your confidence. John Navarro has a lot of confidence right now. It's the third time that Michigan has started to drive inside Bowling Green territory. Looking over the middle, Bellamy again. Well, right now, they're at a pretty good rhythm. Great timing by Navarro. I mean, when he planted that foot, that ball was coming out of there. And the, and the accuracy is the thing that amazes me for such a young quarterback. The ball is on the money. You look at that throw right there. It's right in the belly. The receiver does a good job of covering up. But Navarro, he'll stand nice and big in the pocket, get rid of that ball on time. And uh, that was an excellent call and an excellent execution of that play. 23-yard pickup down to the 24, first and 10. Fargus the carry, a lot of room to run. Picks his spot, gets down to the 18, a gain of five. I know the coaches are happy about seeing him out there. He's gone through so much of rehabilitation-wise and uh, the time away from the game. He's such a great young man. And uh, to see him be able to carry the football and see him work on this football team has got to be a real thrill for Lloyd Carr and his staff. And there was a question at one point, Bob, whether or not Justin Fargus would actually be able to come back and actually play. His career at one time was in question with that broken leg. That's correct, and he's overcome an awful lot. It's great to see him out there. Got the ball again. Still on his feet, right down near the 11-yard line. Well, you can see he's running with a passion. This is a guy that's been waiting to get on the field for uh, about two years, and he brings that arm up and puts it right in the face of the defensive back and gains extra yardage with it. He's going to be fun to watch. I, I'd like to see him have a great year. Michael Malone making the collar tackle there and perhaps saving another score. There's the numbers from 1998 for Justin Fargus. Getting a breather now over on the sideline. Walter Cross to the backfield now. Lamar back to pass. Looking deep in the corner for Bellamy. He leaps over the top and grabs it for the score. What a play by Ronald Bellamy. That ball was thrown to the corner of the end zone so that if Bellamy didn't get it, it was out of the end zone and the defensive back didn't have a chance. Now, if you look at the defense, Bowling Green had a defense very well. Their safety was in great position, playing on the outside edge of the receiver. And as you see this ball coming down, Bellamy just went up and took it away from him. Great play and a super throw by Navarre. Bellamy at six feet, Ken Dobbs at five feet, 10 inches, and to use those extra couple of inches and a little leaping ability as well. Epstein's extra point makes it 21 to nothing. Michigan here midway through the second quarter, just under eight minutes to go. Yeah, you know, Craig, when I was a defensive backfield coach, I always was very concerned about the mismatches size-wise when you had to play against those receivers. Uh, like Jerry Rice and Jake Reed and defend the bigger, tall receivers in the league. He knew you were going to have a tough day. And then Randy Moss comes along and he does the same thing with that six foot four size. So that's a good indication right there of maybe the mismatch there on the outside between the safety and the wide receivers. Well, Bellamy, the sophomore, one of only six true freshmen to play a year ago, and he knew exactly where he was in the end zone because he only had room to get the one foot down, and that's what he did. Well, they've scored two touchdowns on that same exact play and in that same exact area, so that's been something that's working for him. There's Drew Henson, the junior from Brighton, Minnesota, uh, Michigan. Of course, he broke his foot a couple of weeks ago, and they hope to get him back maybe around the start of the Big Ten season. And it's he's good. talking to his young freshman, John Navarre. Well, it's good to see him down there and being part of the team and helping Navarre. And obviously, I know he's probably been an important factor in giving John all the information that he's had uh, exposed to himself. And, you know, it's always good to have your teammates working with you. Epstein's kick will be a touchback again, becoming pretty routine. He's got a good leg, and uh, that ball just jets off it. So, uh, you know, two kickoffs into the end zone, no return. That kind of demoralizes the return team. 
All the young uh, fans and all the fans at Michigan Stadium enjoying this one so far. Took Michigan a little bit to get going on offense. They had the fumble early, but they certainly have gotten into a rhythm now in their last three possessions, scoring touchdowns. Like I said earlier, everyone was nervous, including John Navarre, so that's going to happen. There you see the numbers heavily favoring Michigan in that passing attack right now. Saw him back to pass. Finds his receiver, David Batista. Gain of almost 10 up near first down territory. Brandon Williams there on the stop. Sam was in the shotgun there on first and 10, and uh, his time it was real good. That's, an, that's a good plan by the uh, Bowling Green coaches to get him back there so he could see the field and avoid the rush, give him a little bit more time to get those throws off. Again, big substitution, multiple personnel groups coming on and off the field for Bowling Green. Well, Bowling Green would like to get the balance attack going, but so far their only positive gain rushing has been by the quarterback, Andy Sam, on one scramble from the line of scrimmage. It's been all Michigan's defense stopping Bowling Green. This time, though, a couple of extra yards and a first down. Biggest run from the line of scrimmage right there for Bowling Green. In order for Bowling Green to get back into this game, though, they have to be able to do that. They have to keep Michigan's defense off balance with some semblance of a running game so that they can execute the uh, type of passing uh, concepts that they'd like to have used in this game. Joe Alls with the fine carries. First down at 10 now up near the 38 yard line. There's a look at the first down situation. Michigan is matching up with the four wide receivers. They've just brought their dime defense on the field, Craig. And Andy Saab will take a timeout for Bowling Green. Got up to the line of scrimmage and wanted to make sure that uh, no more missed opportunities, not when you're down 21 to nothing, Bob. That's correct. You know, and I'm really impressed with the uh, sideline organization on both teams, uh, especially uh, with the multiple changes that are occurring with personnel. Uh, as you look at the Michigan defense, uh, uh, the minute that uh, Bowling Green sends out the uh, three and four wide receivers, they're countering with their uh, defensive game plan by putting their extra defensive backs on the field, and it's being done efficiently. There's not any helter-skelter type of concept. So as a coach, you'd like to see that happening in the first game. You're not sure it is, but that's something that you would like to see happen. Well, Lloyd Cards Club carrying on a tradition at Michigan by opening up strong. They're looking for their 100th season opening victory. There's the overall mark. That's not bad to start out the season 99, 18, and 3. At home, they've won 83 of those contests, and they've won their last six home openers and are on their way to making number seven today. What a great place to play a football game in the big house at Michigan Stadium. Uh, it's awesome whether you're a visiting team or obviously the home team enjoys it tremendously, but as a visitor coming in here, you've got to be impressed with this stadium, and, and, and obviously the juices get flowing anyways for any game that you play, but this, game, this stadium gives you a little bit more and a little bit more of an edge to have that extra intensity. How intimidating is it to come in here as a visitor, Bob? I think it's very intimidating. You've got to have an awful lot of poise, and I talked to uh, uh, Sam about that on Thursday, and he, that was something that he alluded to. To be able to block out the crowd was very important to him. First to 10 play. Another shotgun look by Sam. And uh, he seems to be getting very comfortable back there as well. And, you know, if they, they, they drive this and come up with points, I'm sure Michigan may change their thinking in regards to how they're trying to attack uh, this passing game. Well, we got a few people in a good mood, and we know why, looking at the scoreboard. Absolutely. Uh, you know, <laughs> There's no substitute for putting points on the board for the home team. That gets everybody excited and gains a lot of confidence for your young football team. Second down and four south, feeling the heat. Loops this one over and overthrows his intended receiver, his big tight end, Jason Von Dam. Sam took a big hit right after he had uh, released that ball. And, uh, you know, it's very important for your quarterback to be strong in the pocket. But when you take hits like that, that'll take its toll. And hopefully he comes back and uh, executes the way the coaches want him to. But, uh, you know, that's something that uh, can, can hurt you. He got hit low and high on that one. Bowling Green facing third down and 4-0 for 5 so far on third down conversions. 
That's critical in a game of football. You got to make your third down conversions and uh, in order to keep moving the sticks and give yourself an opportunity to score. Saw back to pass. Dumps it off to Alls. Great open field tackle again by Brandon Williams and Alls was headed to first down territory. Excellent play by Brandon Williams. Uh, just what you want to teach a defensive back as far as coming up and, and putting the pads on that uh, running back. There was a lot of open field there. Alls tried to put a move on him and Brandon just took his legs right out from under him. That's an excellent play. David Terrell again back to field this punt by Ricky Schneider. Flag thrown on the field. And this one bounces around inside the 20. Terrell's going to get away from it as it rolls down to the 12. And we'll have to check out what the flag was all about. Looked like it was near the line of scrimmage. And this one's going to go against Bowling Green. So you'd think being pinned down near the 12 that Michigan would go ahead and say do it again. They'll make them punt again, hoping to get better field position. But going back to that play by Brandon Williams, you look at certain plays in a game that are sometimes game uh, game breakers or plays that turn games around. Now that tackle right there, saving the first down, took a lot of momentum away from that Bowling Green offense. That was a big play by a corner. And obviously, you know, when you're playing in tight ball games, and this was not a tight game right now, but that's going to pay off in the long run down the stretch. Nine penalties so far between both these clubs here in the opening half. Schneider, who opened last season as Bowling Green's quarterback, filling in the punting duties today. And Terrell lets this one go, and it looks like he touched it, so he has to bring it back out. And he brings it out near the 10 yard line. Terrell had his hands on the football and had to recover because it was a live ball. It's going to be Michigan football and we come back. It'll be first and 10 at the 10. You're watching Big Ten football from ESPN Plus. And you can see what towel over the head will do the trick. Well, do you look at the difference in the sidelines down here at the Michigan sideline? They got the mist blowing on them over there in Bowling Green. I think they have uh, two little fans. Uh, Maybe. So that's a big difference. <laughs> Those guys in Bowling Green side are roasted down here in Michigan. They're hot too, but that uh, that missed helps. Walter Cross takes the carry. Maybe gets a yard. Michigan has scored touchdowns in each of their last three possessions. Going short and going long. 49 yards on the first one. 90 yards on the second drive and 46 more. On the third one. Michigan's offense is uh, looks like they uh, are in sync very cohesive right now not really having a great deal of success with the running game but the passing game has been outstanding. Second and nine. The bar back to pass. Finds his tight end over the middle Sean Thompson and Thompson slow to get up. Well he had his feet cut out underneath him and it's holding his knee. Well executed bootleg here by Navarre, but as he made that throw, the tight end gets tackled immediately, and uh, this is a blindside type of hit, and those are kind of hits that you hate to see as a coach because you know those knees are very vulnerable. Chad Long with the hit for Bowling Green. And Sean Thompson remains down. That's the second time they've used that play from a backed up situation, Craig, and uh, they've done a great job executing that. As you look at that offensive line, how they sell the run, uh, and then Navarre comes out on the edge, and what we call that, I've called that in the past, is just a naked bootleg where he comes out without any blockers in front of him. What's the line pull? And everybody is drawn to the right or to the run, and here comes Navarre with a clear look at the defense and where his receivers are. Nice timing. Great confidence, good technique by Navarre and the offensive line. The offensive line for Michigan has been traditionally outstanding. When Jerry Hanlon was a coach here years ago and I used to visit Michigan when I was a college coach, the offensive lines were just terrific. And it looks to me like right now they've got that same concept going and certainly uh, that's going to be a real plus for them as they get down the road. Good to see Sean Thompson on his feet. 
You saw the numbers from last year. Of course, he had the big touchdown catch in overtime in the Orange Bowl that turned out to be the game winner. All Big Ten, All American candidate, and an academic All Big Ten player as well. So he goes off the sideline, Michigan now. One of three on third down conversions. They have third and one here. They've had three or less yards to go. They've had trouble converting, but this time Cross looks like he stretches ahead and gets it by a yard or so up to the 22. Well, they came in with a two tight end set, put a lead back right in front of uh, Cross, and uh, they ran it to the weak side of the formation. Got the first down. That was well executed by uh, the entire offense. Michael Malone and Mitch Hewitt there on the stop, but it's still going to be first down and 10 for Michigan. Clock rolling, approaching four minutes, 20 seconds to go. Look at the numbers for Navarre. Only one incomplete pass, nearly 200 yards of offense for him and three touchdowns. Cross gets it open field to his left. A lot of running room for Walter Cross. He's knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Nice run by Cross, but take a look at Askew's block. That's the one that sets him free. Askew leads up inside on this counter play and takes the linebacker on, gets a good piece of him. Cross does the rest. Sergio Lund and Michael Moore knock him out of bounds, but not after a 16-yard game. Askew did a great job of that, great timing, and that those kind of misdirection plays look to me like they're gonna be something that'll pay off big for Michigan as the season goes along. And off, Thomas back in the game, maybe a yard. Came right back to that play except from a different set. So they obviously have some confidence in it and want to work on it and get some timing with it. But that was the same type of play, only coming back to uh, their offensive right side. DJ Durkin there on the stop for Bowling Green. Second down and nine. Well, the Wolverines are working the clock right now, Bob. And they would like nothing more than to run the clock down and get on the board again. Here comes Vargas, trying to turn the corner and slips, but a nice game into Bowling Green territory. A lot of action around the Big Ten, Ohio State. 20 to nothing over Fresno State. And Toledo still leads Penn State 10 to nothing. Minnesota now a 10 point advantage over Louisiana Monroe and Purdue in Central Michigan will start it in a little while. Number 10, Virginia Tech, 18 better than Akron and Nebraska. A lead over San Jose State in the second quarter. Number 17, Mississippi, also leading Tulane and Texas A&M and Notre Dame are scoreless. First and 10 at the 48, it's Thomas again. Plunges ahead for about six. Michael Malone there on the stop. And from the Big East, West Virginia, 17 to nothing over Boston College in the second quarter. Our score here, Michigan 21, Bowling Green nothing. Well, second down. About three minutes to go here in the first half. Well, this is a great drive for Michigan, and it's giving their offensive line a chance to breathe together. You have to be very cohesive up front to make your running game go, and it takes an awful lot of work and timing. And you can see this drive is something they're working real hard on right now. Thomas with 44, Fargus with 28 to chip in for the running game. Thomas picking up one more. So that sets up third and short for the Wolverines. Another Once one. again, though, that clock keeps going, Bob. That's right. And another one of those counter plays coming back to the left side. And obviously, this is something that they want to get as much work on as they possibly can. And I'm sure they'll have some play action off of that. But it's important that they get their timing down on plays where guards are pulling and tight ends are coming around and backs are leading up in there to make the running game successful. So this is good work for them right here. This will be the ninth play of the drive. Seven rushing plays, only one pass called here. Another handoff, Thomas. And it looks like he just got it. Kerry Campbell there bringing him down, but looks like another first down for the Wolverines as the drive continues with two minutes to go. Another super job by number 35, Askew. If you watch him as he comes off the ball, he'll take the defensive end or the outside linebacker, get a piece of him, and then chip up on the corner. And as he comes off, he becomes the lead blocker. Watch this. As you watch the replay, see him come up and block number 30. Obviously, that part of the plan and gives the uh, running back the chance to get the edge and get that extra blocker out in front of him. 
Askew, one of only six of those true freshmen to see action last year. The starting fullback now. Navarro over the middle looks for Terrell. And Terrell had it and lost it inside the 15 yard line. Ken Dobbs there on the coverage. Again, that ball was right on the money. He kind of left his feet and tried to catch it. I don't know exactly what happened as we watch the replay here. Maybe he took his eyes off it, but that ball is right there and uh, just off his fingertips. Great timing and good protection by the offensive line. And you know, Navarre is looking real strong and comfortable in that pocket. It's amazing for his, for his uh, age at this point in time, Greg. Well, he had six completions in a row. He's only missed on two occasions there, and I think they've both been drop passes. Once again, the freshman Chris Perry getting the call, his second carry. Gino Burden there on the stop. I could see why they would like him. Looks like he's pretty explosive, Craig. He's got some speed and uh, some size to go along with it. That's a good call on second and long, show a pass set, run a draw. And end up gaining about seven so that was a big call third down in about, about three or four right now I guess Chris Perry's high school career Bob 4600 yards rushing 71 touchdowns fantastic big play guy obviously Fork Union Military Academy in Virginia Navarre <laughs> back to pass in this one looks like it may have been dropped by Perry again Heck. Again, right on the money. Great, great execution by Navarre. And coming up at halftime, the National Notebook. We'll also take a look at the Big Ten and highlights and stats from the first half as well, all coming up in just a few minutes during halftime here for Ann Arbor. Fourth and, 14, uh, fourth and four situation now, and John Navarre in the game as the holder in this case for Epstein, who will be attempting, it looks like, about a 38, maybe a 37-yard field goal. This one blocked. Bowling Green gets up front. And special teams comes through. Chris Gantless and Will Teague looks like they came in for the block. That was a great effort by that Bowling Green front. They did not want more points on the board. And this is a, a huge, huge motivating factor for them before they go in the locker room. You'd like this on special teams. And somewhere along the line, when you're behind in a game, somebody has to come up and make a big play. And there's one of them right here. Great leaping ability. And that's what you need on your front line on special teams. That's the only way you're going to be able to get that one. That actually was a 47-yard attempt. So sometimes on those, the ball's kicked a little bit lower. 44 seconds to go. Let's see what Andy Som can do on offense for Bowling Green. Michigan's defense has held him in check. Well, Lewis gonna, scoots ahead. They're going to their hurry up offense, two minute drill. They practiced this on Thursday somewhat while I was there. And let's see how Som executes it. Som feeling the rust, ball loose. Michigan had it and lost it, it looks like. Bowling Green got it back. That ball's still loose, and it looks like they're going to give it back to Bowling Green. Well, Shante Orr there on the initial contact for Michigan. Andy Som takes a big hit in the back again, and like I said earlier, those things take their toll when you start getting hit in the back as a quarterback, and there's, the protection is breaking down behind you. Michigan put a lot of pressure on him, and that was a big play for the Michigan defense because when that turnover occurs, you don't want your opponent to drive down and end up with points. So that's a big play right here. And with it, Michigan calls a timeout. Six seconds left on the clock. They're hoping, if nothing else, to force Bowling Green to punt and get a chance at a return. Wolverines already lead this one 21 nothing and we do have an injury update on tight end Sean Thompson. He has a hyper extended knee and they're actually taking him out through the tunnel as we speak. So so the big all American candidate out for at least a while here the attendance 110,585 of course Michigan leads the nation 25 of the last 26 years 155 straight games of 100,000 plus and actually this year Michigan hoping to reach the 35 million mark in attendance over the history of Michigan Stadium incredible they got great tradition they got great fans and uh, 
it's certainly a real credit to their administration and their coaching staff to have what they have here in their athletic department and their educational outlook and their student athletes. Third and 21 for some. Heavy heat coming for that Michigan defense. He's going to let it fly. And this one almost intercepted. And that's how the first half is going to end. Michigan's defense making a statement early here. And it looks like it was going to be the end of the first half, but we do have a flag down on the play, so we need to check this one out. If it's on Michigan, Bowling Green's are going to get another shot. And it is on Bowling Green, so that will end the first half here in Ann Arbor. And Michigan with that three-touchdown lead. Took them a little while to get in rhythm, but they finally do with John Navarre, and it's been three touchdown passes. And it's been all offensive end from the young redshirt freshman. Michigan 21, Bowling Green nothing. Again, it's been all John Navarre. Couple of touchdown passes to Bellamy so far. You're watching Big Ten football from ESPN+. Plus. Very comfortable. I, you can recall that one penalty he had down there in that side of the field where he got hit in the mouth and he released the ball. He came right back and threw a touchdown pass. Well, this guy played defensive end in high school. How many quarterbacks, really successful ones, have you seen play defensive end? None that I know of, and obviously he's probably the exception. What an athlete. Second half is underway, and Batista has to down it in the end zone to take another touchback, so Bowling Green starts out at their own 20-yard line. Bowling Green's offense got the uh, fumble on the first series of the first quarter at Michigan's 47 yard line and only moved the ball seven yards. So the furthest penetration they've had into Michigan territory has been the 42 yard line. And your average yards on first down, Michigan nearly two to one over Bowling Green. The Falcons need a little offense right here to start out the second half, trailing by three touchdowns. Halls takes the handoff, skips ahead for maybe two. Well, this will be an important series for Bowling Green to be able to come out in the second half and show that they still can continue to play with a lot of emotion, get the ball up the field, move the sticks, put some points on the board, try to get some enthusiasm in the si on the sideline and get everybody pulling together so they can get back into this ball game somehow. Godfrey Lewis actually the uh, carrying the ball on that last carry. Second down and eight. He remains in the backfield with some. Little play action, some under a lot of heat. Find it to Gerling, spin move, still on his feet. Up past the 35-yard line. Good start for Bowling Green here in the second half, picking up the first down. Excellent execution on the play action right here. Andy Som goes back and gives a quick flash fake, but watch how he gets his hips around and makes this throw. Very strong in the pocket, follows through. Gerling makes a move, and they got a big play out of it. That's what you need. 14-yard pickup for Bowling Green. Todd Howard there to wrap him up, but not before he gets the first down. Bowling Green needs to make some things happen on offense, and on the ground, it is not happening for them, but they need to establish some kind of ground game confidence as he is wrapped up. Well, the guy that stopped that play was their outside linebacker, number 95, Alin Kazuma. He did an outstanding job of penetrating, taking that lead block around and turning that play back inside. There's the numbers so far for Andy Song. He's going to need to double or triple those up for Bowling Green to get back in this game. Second and long. Looking downfield, this one just out of bounds out of the outstretch reach. Great coverage by the left corner now. If you look this play as it's replayed, you can see Som going back and setting that ball up real high, letting it come down to the receiver and the corner, the right left corner for Michigan does a super job coming up with that play. James Whitley, he's a senior. They're counting on him to make some big plays at that left corner spot. I always thought that was the toughest corner spot to play. Everybody tries to attack that side of the ball. He's a good one, one of the team captains, the All-Big Ten and All-American candidate. 
Sam back to pass again. Finds his receiver and out of bounds. Just short of the first down. Uh, Brandon Williams was on the coverage there. I don't know what coverage they had going, but it looks like they uh, they gave him a little bit too much room. The cushion was real big, and uh, he almost came up with the first down there. Leon Gant just a little short. That brings Schneider in for another punt. And this one's going to take a bowling green bounce inside the 20 down to the 14 yard line. So Michigan will take over for the first time here in the second half. They lead Bowling Green by a score of 21 to nothing. Bowling Green 21 zip. They've got the ball early here in the third quarter at the 14 yard line. Anthony Thomas with a running room up near the 20 and knocked out of bounds. About a seven yard gain for the senior. Another counter play coming back to the right side of the offensive line. And as you can see, this is very well blocked. They get a nice crease there. The guard pulls and the tight end follows right up in behind him. But uh, that's well executed and a good run. Michael Malone and Sergio Lund there to bring him down out of bounds. Second down and three. There are the numbers for Anthony Thomas in this game. Gets the ball again, but that right up near the line of scrimmage. And once again, that Bowling Green defense pretty solid up front. I think they're doing a good job with what they have as far as their execution, but more importantly, what they they seem to to do is take the running game away and kind of lose a little bit from their pass rush, and that's something they're going to have to do a little bit better job here in the second half in order to take uh, the tempo away from Michigan's passing game. D.J. Oucher there for the stop for Bowling Green. Michigan, three of six on third down conversion so far in this game, facing a third and a long two. Thomas easily picks that one up, keeps his feet churning, and gets up near the 28-yard line. Michael Malone brings him down. And Anthony Thomas, take a look at his career numbers here at Michigan. Rushing touchdowns ranked second. Rushes all together, ranks fourth. Look at all those top 10 categories, rushing yards, and he has 13 100 yard games. He has been solid. He's legitimate, no question about it. And he can run with power, too. And that's a real plus for a tailback. Another official Heisman candidate, along with Terrell. Got the ball again up near the 30 yard line. And I'm sure, Bob, at this point, Michigan, as much as they'd like to see Navarre get some time passing the football here in the second half. They've got the lead. They like to score one more time, but they want to keep this clock moving as well. They sure do. And there's some things that Lloyd Carr wants to look at. And you can see what he's trying to do right now. His timing in the running game is something he desperately wants to see take off. And this is exactly what they're trying to do. Second down and six after a pickup of four. Navarre fakes one way, throws the other. This one loose. Bounced around and B.J. Askew picks it up and gets up near the 50-yard line. How about that? John Navarre comes out there, sees the tight end open, drills it. The safety drives on the ball. The ball is tipped, and here comes Askew. Right, takes the tip, goes up the field, almost breaks a tackle. This is unbelievable. When it's going good, it's going good, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Things, the ball bounces your way, and obviously Askew was hustling. But he almost breaks that tackle for it. Even more yardage. Well, he's a tough kid to bring down. That was a nice play by the uh, Bowling Green safety, Chad Long. He's played an excellent game back there. He's very aggressive. He had a shot at that interception. It's too bad he didn't come up with it. There's B.J. Askew. Let's uh, rack up two receptions, 78 yards in this game. Being at the right place at the right time, huh, Craig? What do you think? Boy, he's got a sense, doesn't he? <laughs> Frustrating though if you're Bowling Green's defense. Right. Hard to coach that. Thomas looking for a little running room, gets about two yards just into Bowling Green territory. Well, they're running that counter play uh, quite extensively. It's a counter OF and a counter OY. And when I say F, meaning the fullback is leading or behind the guard. And uh, if I say oh why, it means a tight end is trailing the guy. So they're doing it a couple ways, but all in all, it's just a simple counter 
with the down blocking by the uh, offensive line. Here's a look at the current drive so far. Started back at their own 14. Terrell on a double handoff, trying to find some room, and Bowling Green plays it pretty well. He only gets about three yards. The timing on that wasn't good. Uh, they, uh, the uh, ball was handed uh, a few too many times, it looked like, and they've got a penalty marker down, and I assume it's against them for holding or illegal formation, something along those lines. But the timing's not good on this reverse. Comes off the counter play. Illegal block in the back, above the waist, offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. That's what you risk on a reverse, isn't uh, it, Bob? That's right, Craig. And gadget plays sometimes are really very, very successful, but you got to have people that are over pursuing or out of position, and uh, your your execution has to be flawless to make them work because it takes, uh, there's just so much involved in it, and the ball is being handled by too many people. So uh, I'm sure they'll uh, reevaluate that that play. Saw the University of Michigan established in 1817. Second down and 30. Terrell gets about 20 back up to midfield. What a great move by Terrell. He just froze the corner and then broke to the uh, outside, and the timing of the throw was right there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to defend, obviously, but you're in one-on-one -on -one coverage. The corner's inside technique and puts a little head fake on him. And look at that ball right there on the mark again. Great accuracy. Well, I'll tell you what, sitting upstairs, and I'm sure the 100,000-plus in the stands, what has John Navarre done wrong tonight? Uh, you can't find too much now. He's obviously been schooling himself and been well coached to get himself in this position to play this efficiently in an opening game. Third and ten. This time he sacked flags down, could be holding as well on Michigan. Bowling Green's defense remaining very aggressive. They put some pressure on that time, brought people up the field, blitzed. That's the thing they have to do, fill the gaps, be able to come up with a big play, whether it's a sack or stop the run, but get those gaps filled up so that you can't get any momentum going on offense and try to create the turnover. Offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. Brandon Hicks gets credited with the quarterback sack. He led the team a year ago with four. Notice the drop here. That's a seven-step drop. That's unusual. They've been doing a lot of three and five-step with them, giving them a chance to get the ball away, Craig, and then also play action. And a seven-step drop got them in a little trouble right there. Chad Long set to receive the punt. This looks returnable. Catches it about his 13-yard line. And scoots ahead past the 20 yard line, called the 23. That's where Bowling Green takes over when we come back. The Falcons trail the Wolverines by three touchdowns. You're watching Big Ten football on ESPN. Hello, 1 800 Classic today. Bowling Green's defense comes through, holding Michigan on that last series. But the Wolverines. Still control the scoreboard. Andy Som trying to break that donut and get him on the board. First down at the 22. Back to pass. And it looks like a little misplay there. Let's take a look at other scores from around the country. And a big surprise, not from Ohio State, as they lead Fresno State 20 to nothing. But Toledo looks like they may pick up a win for the back against the Big Ten, leading at Penn State 24 to nothing. Penn State has yet to score a touchdown this season in two games so far. Minnesota leading Louisiana Monroe, and Purdue and Central Michigan are just underway in the first quarter. Number 10, Virginia Tech leading Akron, and number one, Nebraska, big lead at the break. Second down to 10 now. Zom fakes the handoff, dumps the pass down to his big fullback, maybe a two-yard gain to Eric Clark. A couple of more scores to tell you about. Number 17, Mississippi. Four better than Tulane right now at the break. And Notre Dame trailing Texas A&M in South Bend, 7-0. West Virginia leading Boston College at the break, 17-7. 
you know, Craig, uh, Andy Sam had to get rid of that ball immediately. They had pressure on him. Looks to me like Michigan's going a little bit more of their blitz game here in the second half. Bowling Green so far and third down in this game, 0 for 8. Trying to convert here and keep a drive alive. And they do. They do it via the running game. This time as John Gibson, the fullback, makes a nice gain up near the 40-yard line. This was well executed and a great call by Tom Lichtenberg upstairs. The blitz was coming from the outside, and uh, this draw took the ball up the field for the first down. That's a big call. This is a momentum builder right here. If they can string a couple first downs together and get into the end zone, get some points on the board. 14-yard gain brings Bowling Green's rushing yards up to 13. They've been in negative yards since early in the first quarter. Sam of the shotgun back to pass again. Gerling has this one in and out of his hands, I should say. Cleon Gant there. Four wide receivers on the field there on first down, and obviously being behind 21 nothing, that's something they need to do. Ball was right there. Andy Sam had a good throw. It needed to be caught. Would have been a short gain. Michigan was in good coverage, but it's important to keep getting that positive yardage when you're throwing the ball or running it when you're behind like this. Second down and 10 for Bowling Green. Sam's numbers. Back to pass. This one in and out of the hands as well. This time David Batista can't handle it. James Whitley there on coverage. Yeah, execution is the key, and obviously Sam has had a few passes dropped. But Michigan's starting to put the pressure on him, and rightly so. When you got somebody down 21-0, you don't want to sit back there and let them pick you apart. So uh, I can see Michigan doing a little bit more up front trying to get to the quarterback. Well, you saw those uh, fans with the water. Gary Blackney decided to take the tie and shirt off, and he's now in a nice polo shirt and staying a little bit cooler on the sideline, but probably hot trying to get this team back on the board. This time, Sam scrambles. Plenty of running room. Picks up the first down. Spun around inside the 45-yard line and down at the 42. Larry Foot there to bring him down. And Sam probably, probably made the right decision early. You know, he is a good decision maker. The coaches told me on Thursday they really like the way he handles himself, the leadership, the poise, the decision making. He's done that a couple times. And you can see with his size and his strength, and his mobility, he's got to be a real factor for any pass rush team that's trying to get a sack. 19-yard gain on the quarterback scramble. Puts him in Michigan territory at the 42, and this is as far as Bowling Green has been all day. And off to his fullback again, Gibson. Picks up about four down to the 38. Uh, he read that very well now. They ran a lead play up inside. The linebacker stepped up, did a super job of taking on the lead. But that move, finding the crease, gave him that extra yardage. That's well done, well executed. Dwayne Patman there on the stop for Michigan. Watch Clark here. Good block on that backer up the field. Excellent run. You see that misted fan? It is hot down on the field. Bowling Green does not have that luxury, and neither do we. Some heavy heat, and he goes down out near midfield. And who is there again? Larry Foote. Who else? He's having a big game for Michigan's defense. Excellent pressure here by the front of Michigan. They went to a blitz game on this call. We got they caught Bowling Green in play action, which takes a long time to develop. Come up with a big sack. That's a nice play by foot. Four career sacks coming into this game, and you can just tell Michigan was not going to give it up there. A loss of 10 on the play. That sets up third and long, called third and 16. These are nightmare calls for a coach on offense, Craig. Third and 16. Especially right after you've been sacked, because you're going to feel the heat again. Some little timing to Batista. Oh, what a catch! Great play by Batista on the outside. Super effort making that play. Brandon Williams there on coverage, and he can't fault him for that. That was a great bobbling catch, a gain of 26. 
Sam has had good accuracy on these outside throws now. He's had the ball there several times with great coverage by Michigan. And again, they have great coverage here as well. But the receiver takes the ball away and just a tremendous effort on the outside. Well, Andy Sam, the sophomore quarterback, might be coming into his own. He's picked up two straight third down conversions on this drive alone when they were an over coming in. Back to pass again. Looking downfield, tries to loop one, and it decides to throw it out of bounds and go the safe route. Good decision, Craig. He had, everybody was blanketed. He had great coverage in the secondary for Michigan. Had to get rid of that ball. He had to rush on him. And, uh, you know, that mental clock that goes off in your head, that's timing of holding the ball too long as a quarterback. That's something that's very instinctive. It looks like he used it there adequately for his, uh, for his, his play. He avoided the sack. Dave Petruzillo there on the coverage. Chasing Sam out of the pocket. Bowling Green offense, the deepest penetration of the day. Sitting at the Michigan 22. This play pretty impressive. 10 plays, 55 yards so far. Ball loose down on the ground and flags. Step in, it looks like before the snap possibly. You hate to see this happen as a coach. To get a drive going, you're working efficiently, everybody is on the same page, and bang, the flag comes out, and you come up with a bad play. Let's hear the call. Prior to the snap, a snap infraction offense. Five yards, it's still second down. A snap infraction. And it looked like out of the shotgun there. His center, who is John Mazer, filling in for Eric Curl, who is injured and out for the year. Looked like he hit his own leg, huh? That snap. Saw so back the pass over the middle. This one just over the outstretched hands of his receiver, Kurt Gerling. Another blitz by Michigan, but well blocked. I thought the uh, Bowling Green offense picked it up very well, and he had a chance to get that ball away. Ball was just a little high to Gerling. Uh, if he brought that down, there was a chance for a big play and a completion there. And bringing down the heat, James Whitley. You know, Craig, uh, you know, sometimes that pressure forces you to throw that ball a little quicker than what you want to. You know, you don't set your feet right. The ball goes high. All those things are big factors and whether or not you're going to get the ball there. And a timeout on the field, 4.44 to go. Here in the third quarter, Michigan leading Bowling Green. You're watching Big Ten football from ESPN+. Plus. A third down and 15, their most serious threat to score in this entire game. Here's a look at the drive so far. 11 plays, 50 yards, more than four minutes off the clock. It started back at their own 23. They're at Michigan's 27 right now. Inside handoff on third and long. And again, his big fullback, John Gibson, scooting ahead. And it's going to be about a fourth and five after the 10-yard pickup. Larry Foote there again and Dwayne Patman. And it looks like Gary Black. Blackney is going to go ahead with the field goal. Well executed draw play here, Craig. Look at this. As they blocked it, it created a nice crease for the running back and almost got the first down. This is important. They got to get points on the board here after that drive. This is a real critical play. Mike Knapp will attempt the 34-yard field goal to get Bowling Green on the board. This one out of the way, and it looks like it's no good. So Bowling Green's drive ends on a missed field goal attempt. That one just hooked. And the Falcons come up empty here in the third quarter. Well, give credit to the Michigan defense. Defensive coordinator Jim Herman told me yesterday that he was looking forward to see what they could do as a defensive team during any adversity. And the adversity showed up on this drive because Bowling Green made some big plays on him, moved the ball into scoring territory, but came away with no points. So that's a that's a good strike for that defense.
So it's going to be Michigan football. The bar still in at quarterback, his club leading 21 0. It's been a huge part of their offense, and so is this guy, BJS2. One reason because he stays on his feet, does it again. Out of bounds near midfield. Uh, again, Craig, excellent execution on the play pass and the throwback screen to ask you. Ask you does the rest. Uh, give a lot of credit to the uh, the call up in the box, and I really like what they're trying to do on offense right here. You know, ask you obviously is a good player and he needs the ball in his hands, but more importantly, Navarre has got some plays that are being called for him that gives him an opportunity to have success, and he's responding very well. And a flag down on the play looks like it's going to be all wiped out. It's going to be holding on Michigan. So the call illegal block. Take a look on the left part of your screen. During the ask you run. Vargas. Crosses the 35 down at the 37. Well, like I said earlier, this guy's playing with an awful lot of emotion. He gets the ball in his hands. He just wants to go, doesn't he? He runs a jet right out the other end of the stadium. He's got some explosiveness about him. Certainly does, and he goes off to the sideline, though. Looked like he was trying to get his foot back in gear. 18-yard pickup. Good for a first down for Michigan. And off Thomas. And Thomas is brought down right away, maybe a gain of one. Gary Fisher there to make the tackle. Excellent job by Fisher. You know, he neutralized the blocker, came off and made the play on the inside. That was, a, that was a good play. If he didn't make that, they had a good gain out of that. Excellent technique by a defensive lineman. Is there any pressure on that Falcon defense to get that ball back in a hurry, Bob? Absolutely, and you're looking at a team that's not giving up, obviously. You know, they're playing real hard, and uh, the emotion is still there. They're trying everything that they can do within the framework of their defense to get that ball right back for their offense. Second out, a long eight. And off this time to the true freshman for Michigan. Once again, Chris Perry, he's seen the ball a couple of times so far in this game. Yeah, you, know, you can see that they really like him and uh, give him an opportunity to get the ball in his hands. They're setting that up for a guy, a young guy to gain experience down the road. He's more comfortable when he gets into the Big Ten type schedule. Chris Delavella in on the tackle along with Casey William. And Perry comes out. Askew will be the lone setback for Michigan. Three receivers, third down and three. Navarre back to pass. Looks for Terrell, finds him up near the 50-yard line. He'll be down at the 49. Good enough for a first down, though. Mitch Hewitt there with the coverage. But another first down for the Wolverines. Uh, Navarre now, his timing is, and confidence are there. You know, he's into the second half of his first game. You look at that throw, that he dropped that back foot down, that ball came out of there like a shot, and threw it to the right spot, got the first down. Good play. Well, you can't be any more impressed than what you've seen out of this young redshirt freshman. A lot of poise out there, Craig, for a first game. Back to pass again, looking over the middle, finds Terrell. Of course, it doesn't hurt when you have such a supporting cast running the football and catching the football. Well, you know the coaches told them before the game that you've got some great players around you. You got a front that's awesome. You got some great wide receivers. Uh, use them. Have confidence in yourself. Uh, believe in yourself, and go out and do what you've been working on in practice. Gain of 14 more for the Wolverines. 261 yards passing for John Navarre, and we're still in the third quarter. This time the handoff to Cross. He takes it to the near side. Nice pickup. You know, what I like about uh, his ability right now, Craig, is the coaches told him to play within himself out there. 
and make sure that he goes out and executes and does the things that he's practiced with throughout the entire week. Have confidence in yourself. You're surrounded by good people. But you know what? He's taken it a step farther. He's done more. Absolutely. Five of five so far in the second half. He's been nearly flawless throughout this game. Drops back again, looking at the end zone for Terrell. Can't come up with this. Just out of the reach of David Terrell, but more the, the ball handling skills that this young man shows as a as a redshirt freshman to me surprises me and obviously I'm sure the coaches at Michigan aren't surprised they've worked with them on a day to day basis but look at the timing on this this ball could have been caught it was it was very close instead they settle for third and one and Fargers picks it up builds up some speed and gets down near the 11 yard line Sergio Lund there brings him down a gain of 17 yeah, I am impressed with Fargus on this run, but much more so, you know, no running back can do it by himself. Watch this offensive line come off the ball here. They're wearing down the defensive front of Bowling Green, and we got a nice edge there for the running back, and Fargus finds the crease. And the thing I like about him, he keeps those legs moving, and he's getting up the field all the time. Look at those numbers. Six rushes, 63 yards for the first time back in over a year. Fargus again gets down to the five-yard line. And that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. It's been the Justin Farga show here over the last couple of plays. The sophomore doing the job. Michigan in good shape again when we start the fourth quarter. You're watching Big Ten football from ESPN+. Plus. Fourth quarter. It is 21 to nothing, but they are threatening to increase that score right now. They have a good 10-play, four-minute drive going. 65 yards so far and John Navarre has done a nice job perfect so far in the second half passing and Justin Fargus racking up the numbers on the ground. Well, you're seeing an outstanding uh, technique by your quarterback and your running back and your offensive line and a great attention to detail on execution. Second down from the five and off Fargus straight ahead. Maybe down to the three. And off to Justin Fargus. Again, Michigan leading 21 to nothing. Here's our statistics through three quarters. Michigan 156 yards on the ground, 261 in the air. Bowling Green has struggled to get their offense going. Only one legit drive deep in the Michigan territory ends in a missed field goal. The average play, Michigan. More than two to one, better than Bowling Green. Third down now. Quick pass, touchdown Michigan again. This one to Marquise Walker from John Navarre. And that ties a record, his fourth touchdown pass ties a Michigan record in a single game. All right, was that ball drilled in there or what, Craig? That, that was an excellent throw, and watch his quickness right here. I'm impressed. That foot quickness and delivery, that ball was right there on the money. Excellent execution. Great attention to detail. Well, this offense is certainly in sync. There's no question about that. Extra point attempt is good by Epstein, and Michigan increases their lead now over Bowling Green early in the fourth quarter. It is 28 to nothing Wolverines here in the 2000 season opener. The freshman looking like a senior. Michigan dominating this game over Bowling Green, just scoring another touchdown here early in the fourth quarter, leading the Falcons 28 to nothing. John Navarre couldn't be any more impressed with this redshirt freshman, 265 yards passing. He also ties a single game passing record with a host of other quarterbacks. It's been done 10 times. The last Tom Brady throwing four touchdown passes in the Orange Bowl. And so he's a back to back games. And he's a young one, Craig. Excuse me. He's a young one. He's going to be around for a long time. Batista had problems picking up that football. 
I'll tell you what, the strategy by some of these guys, uh, kickers with the kickoffs anymore, putting them just into the corner, and that's a frust frustrating place to come out of. Very difficult to handle that ball unless you get a real good jump on it, and he didn't do that. Coverage teams are real fast for Michigan, and that's a good indicator that you're going to have good special teams. One minute you think they're going to get the touch back, and the next minute they put it up short and in the corner for you. Good strategy. So Bowling Green takes over at their own 10-yard line. Andy Sam remains the quarterback. It's time to hand off to Lewis. Gets a couple. Brought down by Larry Foote. Nice job by Larry Foote, and he, it looks to me like he's going to be a good open field tackler as well as a good blitzer. This guy's an aggressive player, and they've got him in the right position to make those type of plays. That was good execution on his part. Well, you really had no questions on offense for Michigan coming into this game other than to see what John Navarre would do if he didn't take Boyd Carr at his word, saying he was very comfortable with him. The big question was what the defense was going to do, and they've been equally impressive. You're absolutely right on that, and it, you could tell by their quickness and their speed that they're going to get better and better as the season goes along. I know they're young. Their linebackers are young. They'll be young up front, uh, but they've got some good leadership there, and especially outside on the corners with their uh, their uh, two corners, James Whitley and uh, Todd Howard. These are guys that are experienced players that can come in and make some big plays, and Charles Drake is another one as a safety that they're expecting to come along very well, and he's a young sophomore, so. They've got some young people, but they've got some speed. And a lot of the people who follow Michigan know they've already been hit hard with injuries before the season even started, losing Cato June on the other side of the football in that secondary. This one tipped away. Once again, a nice job on defense by Brandon Williams. Brandon does a great job closing on this ball, Craig. Watch this. This is a timing throw, three-step. Quarterback looks him off, but comes right back to him, and Brandon is not going for the fake and made a nice play on it. Bellamy back to take this punt return. David Terrell had been in there for about half the game. Didn't start at the, as the return man, but had a few chances. Michigan going to get great field position again. Bellamy all kinds of room to run. Gets inside the 40 down to about the 38-yard line. And Navarre has had an outstanding debut here. And he's not the only one. Let's take a look at some of the debuts of some of these fine quarterbacks and some of their numbers. Tom Brady, 267 yards a few years ago. Brian Greasy, nearly 200 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Todd Collins, 285 yards and two touchdowns back in 91. Elvis Gerbach and Rick Leach, their numbers. But uh, Navarre is going to rank wise top that list with 265 and four touchdowns already in his Michigan debut Thomas finds some running room and gets inside the 30 picks up a first down John Navarre has been impressive he has had only four incomplete passes and I could probably say I know three of those were dropped well, you know, I don't know what the circumstances were on those other quarterbacks debut, but this guy had been told about a week ago that he was going to be the starter and didn't have the benefit of being the quarterback from the start of training camp on. He's done a magnificent job. It does make a difference in that throw of the fact that it's a season opener, and Lloyd Carr was making the point that this guy's facing the pressure of a season opener. That's Thomas again, plenty of running room. Stays on his feet, gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. Looked like he may have stepped out of bounds with the calls for a touchdown, 27 yards. What an excellent run by Thomas. He came down that boundary and he was pinned to the sideline. Defensive back him up on him. He put the straight arm out. And again, this cutback play is very dangerous when you got a defense that's trying to make plays and trying to over pursue. And that's exactly what happened right there. He was towing the line on the sideline. Thomas now 108 yards rushing on the day. 
The extra point is good, and Michigan now leading Bowling Green with 12.41 to go in this game, 35 to nothing. Anthony Thomas scooting into the end zone for Michigan, building their lead now to 35 to nothing, and you can tell he's done this a couple of times. This is a good run, but you know the Bowling Green coaches and Gary Blackney are going to be very disappointed in some of the tackling on their defense. That's something they're going to, I'm sure, address next week as they get prepared to play Pitt. If you don't tackle well, you're going to let runs like that get away, and that's something that uh, I'm sure they'll be working on. 14 100-yard games now for Anthony Thomas in his career here at Michigan. Long and Batista. It's going to be Batista about a yard deep, fumbles the ball again. Stayed up, stays on his feet up near the 17-yard line, and that's where Bowling Green will try to put something together, get on the board here, and avoid the shutout. 12.32 to go, so plenty of time. Boy, that Michigan defense has been tough from the beginning. They have been, and you know, uh, on these two last two kickoffs, uh, Bowling Green has really struggled in returning the ball, and that's, that has something to do with catching the ball cleanly and getting it up the field, and that's that's obviously a problem for them. And, but the Bowling Green offense is having a real difficult time with the speed of uh, the Michigan defense. There you look at the total yards. What a domination by the Wolverines. Sam took a big time hit as he let go of that ball. That's what caused that bad throw. He had to get rid of it. He had a chance to throw to an open receiver for a short game, but that pressure forced him to throw a bad pass. Norman Bobert in for Michigan on the hit. You get that type of pressure. That's certainly going to take its toll, force you to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker than what you want to. Second out of 10. Saw back to pass. And this one falls out of bounds. Looking for its intended receiver, Andre Pincham. Oh, he had a blitz coming on him. He had to get rid of that ball as quickly as he possibly could. And the ball goes wide, as you can see on the replay here. But watch the pressure. We got some free people coming in for the hit. And he just gets it away. Well, he's trying to get over the top, and he's doing that, but unfortunately, some of his throws have gone out of bounds trying to do that, and you can tell he is frustrated. That can happen to a quarterback, and can happen to anybody out there when you're playing against a team for this type of talent, this type of speed on defense. Lewis takes the inside handoff, and he's going nowhere on third down and long. Well, they, on Spytek there on the tackle. They've just smothered the running game, haven't they? Yeah. Matter of fact, they've smothered all phases of the game. They played extremely well on defense. I know that uh, the uh, coaching staff and Jim Herman in particular wanted to see how they'd respond in a game like situation, and he's getting a good look at it. Lloyd Carr still doing some testing. He's got James Whitley out there on this punt return. He's yeah. tested out a few of his star players. Takes it at his own 44. And makes his return up to the 46-yard line, so a 10-yard return for Michigan. So they'll take over in Bowling Green territory when we come back. It is early in the fourth quarter. Ann Arbor, it's been all Michigan here. The season opener against Bowling Green, 35 to nothing. The fourth-ranked team in the country living up to their billing against Bowling Green. John DeVar. I don't know if he had any feeling coming into this one except potential. He certainly showed he has that. Four touchdown passes. Inside handoff to the freshman again for Michigan. He's carried the ball a few times. Chris Perry. Michael Malone there in the tackle, an eight-yard pickup. When I visited with Stan Parrish on Friday, he told me John has a very strong arm. And this is a quote for him from him. As good as he ever has had as a coach. Wow. That is a pretty good compliment. So they had a good feeling about this guy coming in. Well, again, he's at 4,678 yards and 71 touchdowns in his high school career. Gets the ball again. Knocked out of bounds. 
picks up the first down. Well executed right there. And then Chris Perry shows you that, you know, he could find the crease and he can bounce it outside as well and he can run hard up inside. So as a young freshman, this is a good experience for him. Five carries and 24 yards for Perry. Ryan Beard in the backfield now for DeVar. Takes the handoff on first down. Picks up about three down to the 30. A lot of people getting action in this game. You have to feel real good about your defense when they come up and step up and make plays like that on a running game, knowing full well that you're behind 35 to nothing, and here comes the ball right down your throat. These players at Bowling Green are fighting. Well, there's some time left in this game to still accomplish some things coming out of here for Bowling Green. Here it again. No game this time. Chris Delavella wraps him up. Delavella made a nice play on that, but otherwise it got a big gain. He came off a block and ended up making a good open field tackle. Well, as you mentioned, next week Bowling Green goes home to host Pittsburgh, and then they've got three in a row on the road at Temple, at Buffalo, and at Kent. They actually have a pretty tough schedule midway through the season. They are only home twice through their first seven games. That's always a big challenge when you're playing on the road, Craig, as you know. Another great run for the freshman. Knocked out of bounds inside the 20-yard line, picking up another first down. Nice call by the Michigan coaching staff. Chris Perry takes this handoff on a draw and then breaks it to the outside. But, you know, the threat of the pass from Navarre, he's been so hot for the whole game. Uh, looked like Bowling Green was playing for the pass. The linemen were rushing hard upfield. Chris Perry does a great job breaking it in and getting the sideline. 12 more yards for Perry. 37 yards on the ground. Not only six carries of his freshman debut. Gets the ball again. Pushed ahead. Looks like we have a fumble, and Bowling Green says they have it, but now a flag comes in. No, but just a marker. It's going to be Bowling Green football. Well, that's one thing you don't want to have happen, with it, whether it's a freshman or a senior. You don't want that ball on the ground when you're running the football. You've got to protect that football. And I'm sure the coaches are going to get, at, uh, get after Chris Perry a little bit on that situation. Once you got that yardage and once you got that gain, protect the ball. Don't let it slide out. Don't give him the easy turnover. Chris Scantlitz makes the hit. Gino Burton the recovery for Bowling Green. So they stop Michigan and hope to use a little momentum here, but they start deep in their own territory. Som remains a quarterback. And the handoff to John Gibson again up the middle for about three. 8.45 to go here in the ballgame. They've run that play a couple times up inside, and, and he's been effective with it. You know, Gibson will hit it up in there real hard, and if he gets one break or breaks a tackle, he's into the secondary very quickly. And he's listed as a fullback. That's right. Good size, 5'10", 220. Redshirt junior. Batista in motion. Sam out of the shotgun. Looks that way, and another drop pass. Batista spun around and couldn't come up with that one. And we mentioned the uh, two running backs, Alls and Lewis, at the beginning of the game, and a nice one-two punch they've been able to provide, but the production's certainly not there in this game. Michigan's defense has throttled these guys, so to say. Well, it's taking a little toll on Andy Sum as well. That ball was thrown behind the receiver. He kind of rushed that throw, anticipating some pressure. Third and seven. Sum over the middle. Nice catch by Kurt Gerling for the first down up at the 25-yard line. Gerling went down and dug that out. That was well done on his part. That ball was thrown pretty low in there. And uh, again, uh, Andy Sam is rushing the throw. Ball's right in the dirt. As you can see, Gurley does a great job of scooping it out. 12-yard pickup for the Falcons. 8.06 to go in this one. And 
Gary Blackney would like nothing more than to take that shutout off the board. Again, the handoff to John Gibson. That was that counterplay that Michigan's been running at their defense, and uh, Gibson almost breaks this. He gets knocked a little bit at the line of scrimmage and can't keep his feet, but uh, again, you're right about that. Gary Blackney would like to get some positive yardage and get some points on that scoreboard to go away with a pretty good feeling at the end of this game and accomplishing something such as scoring some points. Blake Nassif there, the last stop for Michigan. This is no way to help. Seeing a lot of players for the Wolverines. That's the beauty when you're out in the front. This one almost picked off. Jeremy Lesur cannot come up with that one, but had a great attempt. Again, it was thrown behind the receiver. And again, the pressure from Michigan has caused Andy Sam to rush his slows, and he's become a little less effective in his accuracy because of that. Well, numbers speak volumes for Michigan, 496 total yards, only 163 for the Falcons. Sam looking deep, tries to find curling and a great diving catch down to the 41-yard line of Michigan. Curling just laid out for that ball, Craig. Ball was well thrown, obviously, and the timing was good. Sam stayed in the pocket. He lays out for this catch. If he doesn't do that, that ball is incomplete. Tremendous concentration and effort on his part. 30-yard pickup, the biggest play on offense for Bowling Green in this game so far, down to the 41. And Gerling off to the sideline. Looks like they're checking his shoulder. For that diving catch, you're laying your body out. You sure are, and he, he was laid out pretty, for a long time there. Fakes the pass in the inside handoff. Godfrey Lewis going nowhere. Michigan's defense not fooled there. The blitz got him on that. They had good penetration up the field, Greg, and the blitz put the pressure on the draw, and they had nowhere to run. Carl Diggs wasn't fooled. One-yard loss for Lewis, second down at 11 for Bowling Green. in the shotgun. This pass a little too far ahead for his intended receiver. Well, right now as a coach, if you're on the other sideline and you're behind 35 and nothing, you're looking for some positive things to happen. And that catch that we just saw by Gerling is something that's along those lines. But right now when you get incompletions like this, that takes it away. So. They've got to get some consistency going that great, create some enthusiasm for this offense. Third and 11 now. In the shotgun cell, back to pass again. Finds Batista wide open. Batista on his feet inside the 25 and a big first down for Bowling Green to keep this drive alive. Good execution by Batista. He sat in between the two zones, linebacker and the corner. Timing was good by Som. Ball's delivered. Beautiful throw. Nice catch. Good tackle. Gain of 17. Wolverine sideline. Bigfog.com. You know how to get one of those now, don't you, Bob? That's right. I know how to do it. They're staying nice and cool. Of course, they're happy right now being ahead 35 nothing. They don't feel too hot down there. First and 10 at the 24. Impressive drive for Bowling Green. Nine plays, 66 yards so far. Started way back at their 10-yard line. Saab looking for pitching in the end zone. Bowling Green touchdown. And they finally get on the board with 5.27 to go here in the fourth quarter. That was an excellent ball handling skills by Saab and delivered the ball on time, got it up the field. Great catch, good double move by the receiver. Results in a touchdown. There's another one of those positive things that you're looking for that you can build on for next week. A 24-yard 
strike for the score. And Bowling Green says, well, I thought they were thinking about the two-point conversion there for a second, but they're going to go for the extra point. First career touchdown reception for Andre Pincham. And the extra point, point is tacked on, so 5.21 to go, and Bowling Green gets on the board. Good-looking pass from Andy Som. Michigan loses the shutout on defense. Bowling Green on the board, 35 to seven. Your score in Ann Arbor. Welcome back to the big house in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's on its way to win the 2000 season opener against Bowling Green, but Bowling Green makes sure that Michigan doesn't get credit with the shutout as Pincham comes up with a big touchdown catch delivered by Andy Som. Well, and if you're Tom Lichtenberg and Gary Blackney, you're going to like that because the fight is still there no matter what the score is, and that's a big key to your football team. Perry and Cross deep to receive this one for Michigan. It's going to be Walter Cross. Pretty good run back for Cross as he gets up near midfield. We are in Ann Arbor, the Big Ten football opener. The season opener for the Michigan Wolverines here at Michigan Stadium, taking on the Max Bowling Green alongside Bob Alicenti. I'm Craig Kishan, and it's been all Michigan in this one, and a very impressive, impressive performance by John Navarre. And we'll see if we see him here for the final series, and we won't. We're going to get Andy Maneri in. Well, you knew that Michigan had good offensive linemen, outstanding receivers. A stable of running backs coming back. The question that Coach Carr and his staff wanted to find out was how could the quarterback function as a redshirt freshman in this situation? And I think that question was pretty well answered, don't you, Craig? Absolutely. I don't know how much more the staff could be pleased with what they saw to John Navarre. And now you've got another redshirt freshman in there, Andy Minnery. And Navarre, of course, your day's not done. Just because you're not throwing, you get on the headset, you got to keep track of what's going on as well. Look at the numbers, 15 out of 19, 265 yards, four touchdowns. Again, the four touchdowns in one game by a Michigan quarterback. Ties uh, tops for that list. Well, that's impressive. You know, going on the sideline, he's not taking his pads off. He's pulling for his teammates. He's got the headset on. He's signaling in plays. He's in the game, and that's the key. His job isn't over, like you said, Craig. That's impressive. And there's Drew Henson, who looks to get back on the field in a few weeks as his bone in his broken foot continues to heal. Bowling Green uh, penalty, too many players on the field there. It puts Michigan in an even better situation inside Bowling Green territory. Can you imagine the, uh, the meetings, the quarterbacks meetings the next couple weeks in their preparation for their upcoming opponents? How good the coaching staff's got to feel about their depth oh, absolutely. at those positions? Absolutely. To be able to have two quarterbacks like Navarre and as a redshirt freshman doing an outstanding job and then your starter, when he's down and hurt, he comes in and replaces him. That gives you great depth. And Michigan going over 500 yards. Last time they did that against Hawaii in 1998. And Minnery goes down on the sack. Ochar there to pick up the quarterback sack for Bowling Green. There is the last time Michigan went over that big 500-yard plateau. They got 524 against Hawaii. Lloyd Carr, not fully smiling just yet, but you know he's pretty happy with what he's seeing. He likes what he's seeing out of his freshman, Chris Perry, who continues to run well. Just what we said earlier about him. He's a up the field type of ball carrier. He's aggressive. He finds a hole quick. He can bounce it outside. He's got good bursts and good acceleration. He's going to use him quite extensively, I'm sure, this year. And this is good experience for him in this game. Malone and Della Bella in on the tackle. 12 yard pickup for Perry. And 
of course, Lloyd Carr picking up win number 50. And let's take a look at the uh, best starts of the first five seasons of any coach. And he ranks right up there with some of the best, Bob. That's outstanding. And going for his 50th win puts him pretty close to that number one spot, doesn't it? When you're on that list, why not be number one? Absolutely. You're among the best. Absolutely. He's done an outstanding job. And you can tell when you walk into his office that he's He's the type of coach that you'd love to have your son play for. And I'm not taking anything away from Gary Blackney because he's an excellent coach as well and has been very successful. Gary turning the corner down near the 30-yard line. About a five-yard pickup flag on the field. This game a little bit as you start to see the sub, to see a little more time on the field that they're not used to. This one going against Michigan again. Another push in the back, it looks like. That's inevitable, Craig, when you start throwing those numbers out on the field that, uh, that sometimes are duplicate numbers of other players and also guys that don't get a lot of reps in practice time. They're anxious to go out and play. They want to show what they can do, and they get a little over exuberant. Well, Michigan gets one more home game next week against Rice, and then they hit the road for UCLA and then the Big Ten opener on the road at Illinois. And remember, Illinois came in here last year and upset Michigan, a huge comeback. Well, I'll guarantee you, I know the coaching staff's gonna be thinking about this game and trying to make the corrections that they have to make as they go off the field here with their players, congratulating them. They're thinking about next week when they leave the field here. They're getting ready for next week's ball game mentally enjoying this win for a few hours but they know they got a lot of work to do the season's a long season this is one game in the season the first game they feel good about what they've tried to accomplish probably answered a lot of questions but now there's a lot of more work to do too Craig. just the beginning isn't it Bob? just the beginning as a former coach did you feel the the fall camp was one part of your year, and then getting that first game under your belt moving forward was another part? That's correct. That fall camp was phase one. The opening two or three games were phase two, and then the rest of it was just as you see. There goes Perry using his speed and staying on his feet into the end zone. His first career touchdown, 42 yards. He wasn't going to be denied, was he? Absolutely not. Excellent effort. Ten carries, 103 yards. So the freshman joins the senior, hitting that 100-yard plateau in the game. Anthony Thomas also went over 100. You like the way he broke those tackles at the end. You know the intensity level to try to get into the end zone. That burning desire to score points. Hard to coach that, and they got that heart that's just that big and that fire burning in their belly to want to get into the end zone. It's hard to coach that type of technique and get that intensity level into a into a player. He's got to have it. How about that for a third down run as well? 3:02 to go in this game. Michigan 42, Bowling Green seven. Let's take another look at what the freshman accomplished today. Ludes one tackle, and this one staying on his feet. Looks like he was going down right here. And Andy Minnery likes what he sees. Yeah! I think the point is, is that the line of scrimmage, it was well blocked, but he also made some people miss, bounced out sideways, laterally, got that explosiveness in his, in his run. This is a good running back for a young freshman. Well, Gary Blackney's club, of course, finishing in the middle of the, the MAC over the last few years, picked to finish right there again this season. And Michigan, though, much higher expectations. Obviously, they're ranked uh, fourth in the coaches' poll, the ESPN Today, USA Today poll. That's correct. And, uh, but, you know, Bowling Green's got nine starters coming back on defense. They've got to be a little disappointed in their play. Uh, some of their tackling and maybe some of their execution isn't what they anticipate and what they expect. So they're going to go back, uh, uh, I'm sure, and take a look at everything, make some adjustments, get ready for next week. 
uh, and get their players in position to play the type of football they're looking to play on defense. But they just faced a very difficult task against a good offensive line and a good offensive football team in Michigan. And another touchback. Three minutes to go. And here is what's happened throughout the afternoon here. John DeMar, the redshirt freshman, steps in impressively. 15 out of 19, 265 yards and four touchdowns. Ties a team record for single-game touchdowns. Total yards completely dominated by Michigan. And rushing yards almost 300 for the Wolverines as Thomas and Perry go over 100. Thomas with 108, Perry at 103, and each scoring a touchdown. Just under three minutes to go. And Ricky Schneider in at quarterback. Gives the ball off to Godfrey Lewis. And flags come flying in. Look like face masks from up here on the tackle. Interesting story about Ricky Schneider. Last year, he was a starter for the first three games. And then got delayed at a meet, getting to a meeting. And uh, they uh, made the change with Andy Som. And all of a sudden, Ricky Never found the field for the last seven games, and here he is out there today. And I'm sure he's excited about playing. He's a fifth-year senior and came back for his fifth season, so he's a real unselfish type of player. It's good to see him getting some snaps. And you saw the face mask penalty on Michigan. That puts the ball up to the 45-yard line now. Bowling Green a chance to get on the board one more time before they leave Michigan. Schneider looking ahead and wide open downfield. This ball just tipped at the last moment. Good defensive play by Michigan's Larry Stevens. Michigan's making it very difficult to get a big play on them, Craig. They're playing a nice zone back there and letting everything come to them. At that time, uh, Smalls made a good play on that deep ball. Gant had a shot at it, but had to wait just a little bit for that ball to come down. So second and 10 remains on the 45. Inside handoff. And once again, going to his big fullback. John Gibson, nowhere to go against Michigan's defense right now. Third and long. Well, they caught him in a blitz again, and uh, a draw play against a blitz is very difficult because all the gaps are filled, and you got penetration, and the draw is such a slow developing play that you're going to have difficulty making that work. down and 11 Schneider in the shotgun for the Falcons he sends four out pass complete Pincham's got it he scored the touchdown picks up the first down looks like he's got some quickness out there Craig he caught that ball and almost broke a couple tackles and make it very difficult for people to get their hands on him pickup of 13 Van Pelt there with the stop for Michigan Kurt Gerling made that diving catch and went off to the sideline after that. You remember earlier in the fourth quarter with what looked like a little soreness in his shoulder. And Pincham came in. You're right. He shows a lot of speed there. They may want to take a look at him. And Schneider calls timeout for Bowling Green. They want to make sure that they finish strong. And so he wants to get everything straight up there on the line of scrimmage. One Minute 21 seconds to go officially here in the ball game. The 2000 season opener almost complete. Michigan is going to add a little bit more to their history by picking up season opening win number 100 in this, their 121st season of football. Let's take a look at what Michigan faces here for the rest of September. Taking on Rice here in Ann Arbor next week, and then they hit the road, opening up the Big Ten season at Illinois, and then come back here September 30th to take on fifth-ranked Wisconsin 
And a lot of people, obviously, as this season begins, they look at September 30th and they say Wisconsin and Michigan, Michigan and Wisconsin, who's number one and two in the Big Ten right now? And they're pointing towards that as saying Big Ten championship winner has, again, that, that uh, if you want an inside track, if you will, to the Orange Bowl for the national championship, you obviously have to win that game to keep going. No question about that, but they are not going to look past that next ball game like Rice and then UCLA before they get to that one. But that That's one why we're here, time. Bob. That's right. <laughs> That's why I'm up here in the booth working with you. First to 10 at the 43. Schneider feeling some heat. Here comes Michigan's defense, and he gets out of bounds. And maybe just back to the line of scrimmage after a big collision over there on the Michigan bench. I think he ran over one of the coaches or they John Wood in hot pursuit coming off that defensive line for the Wolverines. Rick Snyder shows a lot of poise coming off the bench here. I know he's an older player. You know, he called timeout when the, clock, uh, the play clock was winding down. Right here, he eat the, ate the football and scrambled and he didn't have any receivers open. And you can see his maturity out there. Second down and 11. Loss of one. Schneider stays in the shotgun. Gibson with him in the backfield. Schneider rolling. This time he's going to keep it. And he stopped at the 40-yard line for after a gain of about four. That was a nice open field tackle right there by number 63. He did an outstanding job of uh, putting the inside pad on Schneider, not allowing him to break to the outside. I kind of like that play. It's very difficult to tackle a quarterback that's on the move in the open field like that. Third down and seven for Bowling Green as the clock continues to roll. We're at 40 seconds left. Schneider, pressure by Michigan, and this one is in and out of the hands of Batista incomplete. So one more try for Bowling Green to try to pick up the first down. It'll be fourth down and long. Had a chance there, didn't he? He put the ball right on the money. Ball was dropped, but he kind of like uh, Rick coming in here and trying to execute the offense and staying within the plan. Looks like his arm is still pretty alive. Big house football here in Ann Arbor. You gotta love to have a nickname for your home turf, don't you? That's beautiful. A lot of games have been played in this stadium and a lot of games have been won by Michigan here. They're tough on, at home. Schneider back to pass. Complete to Batista. First down inside the 30-yard line. So Bowling Green will have another shot or two at the end zone before they leave Ann Arbor. 16 seconds to go. Blake Nasif there on the tackle. Nice job of scrambling and buying time by Schneider, getting his receivers downfield, giving him a chance to get open. Did a good job getting that throw in there. And the Falcons call timeout. That is their last time out of the half. They'll just try to group up together and toss a couple in the end zone and see if they can get out of here on a positive note. They've already scored one touchdown late here in the fourth quarter to get off the schneid, if you will. I don't think the fans really like that timeout call, do you? No, they don't. <laughs> Those remaining here at the big house. The announced attendance more than 110,000 here today. Well, they got a great show for an opening game for their team. And you know, they've got to be proud of this Michigan football team. There's some youth out there on defense, and they responded. There was youth at the quarterback spot. He responded. So you got to go away feeling real good. Get ready for next week, and uh, you know, hopefully come out and do the same thing. So the Falcons huddle and come out with a first and 10 at Michigan's 28. Schneider feeling heat, lets this one go. It's going to go incomplete, or is it picked off? Nope, ball's a little too far out of bounds. Great effort out there by Michigan on defense. Again, Nassif. The effort was outstanding. The ball was just a little wide. He had to get rid of that. He had instant pressure on him. Well, these guys don't want to give up another touchdown either. No, I can't blame them. There's That's the pride pro on both sides of the ball. That's the pride of playing defense, Greg. Keep them out of the end zone. That's the bottom line. All those other stats don't mean anything. Okay, 
11 seconds to go. Schneider again. Here comes the blitz by Michigan. Throws one up. And this time it is picked off by the Wolverines at the one yard line. Michael Manning comes up with the football. He, he played that very well, didn't he? Sitting back there in his zone, the ball was up real high, he timed it, came back to it, got the interception. That's the way you want to end the ball game. Well, Schneider just had to throw it up there. He only had one receiver downfield, and there was about four Michigan defenders, so the odds were with the defense on that one. But a good play. Navarre, again, has been very impressive. Right. All right, so he's got the one game under his belt, Bob. Very impressive. Certainly, you would have time to, uh, you would have a hard time trying to repeat that performance. But what you have to do is get your head clear and know that you're capable, not only capable of doing the job, but you've done the job. You're successful. Well, there's enough things that they'll look at on a the tape they'll come up with to give him the work uh, on this next week. And I'm sure he'll be the first to say that. Very impressive. So that is the end of the game. Michigan wins this one 42 to 7 is the final score. John Navarre, very impressive freshman debut. And of course, now he's going to become a media darling here for at least another week or so for Michigan as this team now uh, moves ahead and gets ready for its next game against Rice right here in Ann Arbor next week. We'll take a timeout and come back to the big house in Michigan. Again, the final score the Wolverines. Top the Falcons 42 to 7. You are watching Big Ten football from ESPN Plus. The 2000 season opener by topping Bowling Green State 42 to 7, the final in the big house here at Michigan Stadium. Let's take a look at some final stats and the numbers extremely impressive for Michigan. The rushing yards, 288. The passing yards, 265 for John Navarre. The total yards, the obviously big difference when you add those two up, 554 total yards going over that 500 mark in total yards for the first time in a couple of seasons. Third down conversions were there, 29 first downs. You can't say much more than that. The numbers tell you the story. That, that's good balance, and that's what you're looking for as a coach, Craig. You want balance in your offense, and you want to be able to score points with it, control the tempo of the game, ball, possession time, all those things take into consideration to help you be successful. Now watch this. And this replay, Navarre puts the ball right in the corner of the end zone. It's just a great leaping grab by the receiver, but more importantly, the accuracy by the quarterback. That young quarterback came out there today and wanted to prove that he could get the job done. And he can show you right there, he's got a rifle-like arm. He can throw accuracy. He can throw for touch. Uh, he's got the tools, it looks like, to, uh, to improve and keep getting better. And obviously, this was a good day for him. A final word. When we come back to Ann Arbor, Michigan 42, Bowling Green 70, you're watching Big Ten football from ESPN Plus.